Let's give us a couple of minutes for everyone to join in. Okay. Edward's other email is under attendees. Does he want to come in as well? Ed Edward, your other email. Yeah, let him in. Who's joining from that? Oh, it's you as well. Should we let you in? We can't Me? hear you. Ah, oh, it's your sound. Okay. We're promoting you to panelists. Gustav, can you look at the attendees to see if there's anyone there that needs to be promoted? Okay. Um, Justine, you were saying something. Sorry, I lost your voice. Can you look at the uh, attendees and see if there's anyone that needs to be uh, promoted? All right, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, Edward, are you on the uh, interpretation mode? Okay. So, yeah, to all the attendees, I'll write, I'd like to request you to please, uh, please choose a language of your choice because otherwise you will end up hearing two sounds at the same time. So, Kandil Saab, if there are more than one computers in uh, around where you are, I think we will hear a bit of an echo. So request if there are more than one computers, maybe you can mute the rest of them. So it's easier. Thank you. Chingis, uh, can you double check the audio translations, please? Yes, so uh, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, Eduard, do you hear me? Please, please note whichever language you plan to speak and listen to, kindly choose that language in the lower right corner. Uh, there is a little globe which says interpretation and you can choose the language of your interest out there. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay, it is. Yeah. 
I hear it well. I hear the English interpreter well. Thank you. So, can you start? Yep. Mr. Yada, first of all. Just one second, Chingis. Uh, let me set everything up. All right. Uh, great. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for being patient with us. Uh, technology always, you know, while it makes things easier, sometimes it brings its own challenges with it. But fortunately, uh, I, we, we've made it through. Um, I'd like to now request you just a, one important housekeeping uh, uh, request. Please keep the language of your choice chosen in the lower right corner where there's a little globe saying interpretation. Otherwise, you will end up hearing two different voices. And when you speak, others may hear two different voices as well. So kindly keep the uh, keep your language chosen right from the beginning. Um, so to let's start the sixth steering committee meeting of the Global Snow Leopard and Ecosystem Protection Program. Uh, we have uh, Excellency Mr. Ram Sahai Prasad Yadav, Honorable Minister of Forest and Environment, Federal Democratic Republic of Nepal, and Excellency uh, Ms. Dinara Kutmanova, Honorable Minister of Natural Resources, Ecology and Technical Supervision of the Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, we have uh, honorable delegates from all snow leopard range countries here. We have organizational partners, conservationists, and uh, representatives of several NGOs uh, joining us today. Uh, with, uh, without coming in between, uh, the, the honorable uh, host of this meeting, who is uh, the, the minister of uh, uh, Minister of the Kyrgyz Republic, uh, Ms. Dinara Kutmanova. I'd like to invite her to kindly uh, give the welcome address and also the country update on behalf of the Kyrgyz Republic. Ms. Oh, Kutmanova. Мне поздравить господина Прасад Ядав с назначением на пост министра охраны окружающей среды и лесного хозяйства Непала. Я желаю плодотворной, успешной работы и взаимодействия сотрудничества. От имени Министерства природы, технологии и технического надзора Кыргызской Республики я сегодня рада приветствовать вас всех на столь важной для всех встречи в шестом заседании Управляющего комитета глобальной программы по сохранению Снежного Барса. Мне доставляет большое удовольствие выразить слова признательности. Инициатива провести заседание, хоть и дистанционно, нашла в очередной раз поддержку. We can just give it a minute. We should be able to reconnect. I'll double check at the back end.
Our apologies. There's been a little uh, internet outage at the ministry's office. Uh, they should be connecting any moment. Just give us a couple of minutes. Uh, in the meanwhile, maybe what I can uh, request is um, Honorable Minister uh, from Nepal, who happens to be the chair of the GSLEP steering committee meeting, uh, of the GSLEP steering committee, um, uh, Minister, Mr. Ram Prasad, uh, uh, Ram Sahai Prasad Yadavji, if you could kindly give your speech, then in the meanwhile, we will hopefully have uh, Ms. Kutmanova connect uh, back to our system. Thank you. We hear you well, sir. We hear you well. Namaskar. Good morning. Welcome, you all. Your Excellency, Honorable Heads of Delegation, from the Snow Leopard Dance Country, International Partners, ladies and gentlemen. Pleasure to be here as a chair, chairman of the Global Snow Leopard and Economic Protection Program, GSLEF, Steering Committee. Though we could not meet physically at this situation of COVID-19 pandemic, the modern technology made it possible to meet and once again discuss for conserving magnificent, magnificent snow leopard. I take this opportunity to acknowledge the contribution of the government of the snow leopard dense countries for their efforts to protect this secretariat team for providing the right framework for collaboration and cooperation among the range countries, donor agency, local communities, and other stakeholders. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, Nepal has a history of more than seven decades in the conservation of this flagship species of the mountain ecosystem. Government of Nepal has been giving highest priority to save the species through the establishment of different protected area system in all three snow leopard conservation landscape. That is Eastern, Central, and Western Himalayas. I'm pleased to share that the government of Nepal has delivered plan, snow leopards ecosystem management plan for the Eastern landscape Further, the government of Nepal has constructed Snow Leopard Research Center in Kanchanjunga Conservation Area. And now it is in the final stage of operation, of facil operation to facilitate research activities to higher altitude species, including Snow Leopard. Furthermore, government of Nepal mobilizing more than 3.5 million US dollars in one for the Snow Leopard Conservation community managed livestock insurance scheme and compensation to families for the livestock loss caused by snow leopard is another stepping stone. To involve local community in conservation, recently provincial and local governments are also supporting local communities and institutions for human snow leopard conflict mitigation, research and conservation. Your Excellency, tourism is the backbone of our conservation financing because of the immense pressure of COVID pandemic. Conservation investment is significantly reduced. Furthermore, climate change is another emerging threat on survival of this charismatic species. Balancing conservation and development aspiration is another challenge. Snow leopard inhabiting in remote mountains faces habitat fragmentation and degradation, loss of prey base and poaching. To maintain healthy mountain ecosystem, it is essential to restore the habitat. Of this species and mainstream, the development goal 
with conservation to seek the participation of local community in the conservation we need to promote conservation incentives to improve their livelihood a strong law enforcement and transboundary cooperation in all the range countries is equally important to save the species from extinction the gslep could be a decent platform to influence the regional and national level wildlife enforcement networks through policy research and action for conserving snow leopard and other endangered species the government universities research institutes big corporates conservation partners donors and local communities could be our partners to achieve our common goal your excellency i strongly acknowledge the contribution of gslef secretariat scientific community and other stakeholders for developing common protocol to estimate the snow leopard nepal also started national population assessment by creating advisory and technical committee for national snow leopard population survey in 2020 due to covid pandemic we could not carry out snow leopard survey on time we have committed to complete this process in in the coming year i would like to express my sincere thanks to all delegates conservation partners and donors who supported to make this steering committee meeting successful thank you thank you very much sir uh, thank you for that inspiring uh, speech uh, we'll just give uh, take a second to check if Ma madam kutmanova has been able to join back um she is here Chris. she is here so justin can you please move the spotlight on her candy thank you yes уважаемые участники управляющего комитета позвольте мне свое выступление. <coughs> Нынешний год также знаменует восьмилетие установления Дня Снежного Барса и одобрения самой программы. И пользуясь случаем, хочу поздравить уважаемых своих коллег <coughs> из стран Ареала Снежного Барса, а также всех присутствующих с этой знаменательной датой. Это уникальный случай, когда дело спасения Снежного Барса получило такое признание на столь высоком уровне, как в правительстве 12 стран. Сегодня Снежный Барс нуждается в нашей опеке. Мы считаем, что угроза исчезновения снежного барса должна стать объектом внимания и международного сообщества, а сохранение вида станет общей ответственностью. Как вам известно, любая серьезная программа по сохранению экосистем имеет большой масштаб работы, который требует значительных ресурсов и финансовых средств. Кыргызстан делает постепенные шаги и в этом направлении. Так, из общих выделяемых средств по линии программы ГФ-7 по компоненту биоразнообразия мы уже начали вести переговоры с аккредитованными международными исполнительными агентствами. Данный проект предполагается даст толчок и трансграничному сотрудничеству, включая деятельность по пастбищам, землепользованию на ландшафтном уровне и развитию экологического туризма. Конечно же, вся деятельность в рамках проекта будет сфокусирована на сохранении снежного барса и экосистем в условиях изменения климата. Мы с гордостью сообщаем, что благодаря скоординированным Условием за последние годы четыре страны Центральной Азии, Республика Казахстан, Кыргызская Республика, Республика Таджикистан и Республика Узбекистан на пути одобрения трансграничного меморандума о взаимопонимании по сохранению снежного барса и его кормовой базы на Западном Киншане и по миру Алайском регионе. Уважаемые коллеги и участники, в целях активации нашей совместной деятельности мы призываем поддержать инициативу о разработке проектов по сохранению снежного барса с возможным выделением финансовых квот и существующих глобальных финансовых механизмов, таких как Зеленый климатический фонд, Глобальный экологический фонд и другие. Убеждаясь в необходимости совместных и коллективных действий, еще раз подтверждаем нашу приверженность сохранению, охране и защите снежного барса и его экосистем. Поскольку четко осознаем его особую роль в сохранении многочисленных видов и животных, населяющих наши высокогорные ландшафты. В этой связи 
призывая международные организации, такие как ГЭФ, ПРООН и другие стороны к совместному активному сотрудничеству. Хотим отметить, все мы уже говорили о важности перехода от декларации к действиям. И ключевой принцип деятельности должен быть лидерство, ориентированное на результат. Мы можем с гордостью сказать, что Кыргызстан уже показал яркий пример. Кыргызская сторона в рамках реализации глобальной программы по сохранению снежного барса и его экосистем и Рижкейская декларация проделала соответствующую работу. Так, кыргызская сторона активно запустила процедуру по определению новых особо охраняемых природных территорий по стране. За последние три года на территории Кыргызской республики были образованы три новых особо охраняемых природных территорий, где обитает снежный барс, с общей площади более 363 тысячи гектар. Начата государственная программа по созданию единой методологии определения численности снежного барса. Буквально вчера при поддержке Министерства природы состоялась встреча партнеров на предмет численности снежного барса на территории страны. Результаты мониторинга мы представим еще дополнительно. Наша страна последовательно идет к достижению цели обезопасить 20 ландшафтов обитания снежного барса, так как Кыргызстан разработал и одобрил план управления ландшафтом центрального тиншания и дан старт к разработке нового плана управления для северного и внутреннего тиншания. Считаем весьма важным, что данные планы придадут новый импульс в рамках программы после 2021 года. Уважаемые дамы и господа, повестка дня устойчивого развития до 2030 года ставит перед мировым сообществом, в том числе и странами Ареала, задачу соблюдения трех аспектов устойчивого развития – социального, экономического и экологического. В данном контексте принимаем усилия кыргызской стороны, направленные на сохранение биоразнообразия, созвучно с глобальным призывом и взятыми нами обязательствами по достижению целей устойчивого развития. Хочу отметить, что Кыргызстан при поддержке международных организаций инициировал два форума по сохранению снежного барса и его экосистем, прошедшие в 2013 и в 2017 годах в городе Бишкек. Данная платформа позволила странам ареала снежного барса совместно с международными партнерами не только обсуждать имеющиеся проблемы, но и принимать согласованные меры для сохранения популяции этих редких кошек. Мы уверены, что документы сегодняшнего заседания, согласно повестке дня, позволят странам Ареала скоординировать усилия, привлечь значительные финансовые, организационные, технические ресурсы, наладить эффективную научную кооперацию и по благо сохранения этих детских диких животных среды их обитания. Уважаемые члены управляющего комитета, уважаемые партнеры, позвольте мне... Пригласить вас от имени Министерства природных ресурсов, экологии и технического надзора Кыргызской Республики на встречу старших должностных представителей стран ареала Снежного Барса, которая состоится на полях 26-й конференции сторон Рамочной конвенции ООН об изменении климата в Глазго. Официальное приглашение мы вышлем вам дополнительно. Ждем вас на этой конференции. Еще раз хочу отметить, что кыргызская сторона возлагает большие надежды на поддержку со стороны управляющего комитета и на международных партнеров по совместной деятельности в рамках реализации глобальной программы по сохранению снежного барса. Я благодарю всех вас за внимание и желаю всем крепкого здоровья, успехов и удачи. Thank you very much, uh, um, Honorable Minister, Ms. Dinara Kutmanova. Uh, really inspiring, and we look, all look forward to uh, the upcoming events in Glasgow. Uh, with that, I'd like to move to our next section, which is uh, partners uh, and, uh, well, which is country statements. And for the first statement, I'd like to invite uh, a dear friend, uh, Sonam Wangdi from the Royal Kingdom of Bhutan to speak on behalf of uh, uh, Bhutan. Sonam Ji. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Gustav. Am I audible? Okay. 
uh, Your Excellency Ram Sahi Prasad Yadav, Honorable Chair to the GSLAB Steering Committee, and Honorable Minister, Ministry of Forest and Environment, Federal Democratic Republic of Nepal. Your Excellency, Ms. Dinara Kutno Kutmanova, Honorable Co-Chair to the GSLAB Steering Committee. Honorable GSLAB Steering Committee members, esteemed delegates, distinguished representatives from our, from our partner conservation organizations, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning and good afternoon to all of you. Kuzu Zangpo from Timpo, Bhutan. First of all, let me have the honor to convey the warm greetings and best wishes of His Majesty, the King, the Royal Government, and the people of Bhutan. On behalf of the Royal Government of Bhutan, I would first of all like to convey the regrets of my Minister, His Excellency, Tempo Yeshi Penjo, for not being able to be here for this meeting due to some prior engagements. On behalf of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forest, and on my own behalf, I would like to thank the GSLAB uh, Secretariat and the partner organizations for organizing the sixth GSLAB Steering Committee meeting virtually, despite the continuing challenges posed by the pandemic. Since the inception of GSLAB, the Secretariat and the partner countries have achieved great milestones in terms of our collective efforts towards saving the magnificent snow leopard. I would like to take this opportunity to applaud and congratulate uh, the GSLAB and the range countries for the commendable achievements in such a short span of time. I would like to mention here that despite our concerted efforts towards conserving the magnificent uh, snow leopard, the species and its related uh, ecosystems are in dangerous decline all over the world. It is in fact uh, sad to note that snow leopards continue to face increasing threats from the loss of habitat due to climate change, illegal wildlife trade, and retaliatory killing, which are aggravated due to the changing climate. Distinguished leaders, academicians, and practitioners gathered here, I feel that we have the opportunity and the responsibility to carry forward the legacy and dreams of our predecessors. Since the uh, signing of the Bishkek uh, Declaration by all the Snow Leopard Range countries, we have come a long way as an international community in our commitment to protect the Snow Leopard and their fragile mountain habitats. I therefore would like to solicit continued political will and public support to ensure that the snow leopards and their ecosystems thrive despite all these challenges. For Bhutan, it is my great pleasure to report that under the far-sighted vision and benevolent leadership of our great monarchs and the political will and our tradition of living in harmony with nature, Bhutan today has emerged into the 21st century as a biodiversity rich country. We are we are proud to have more than 71% of our geographic area under forest cover and more than 51% of our country declared as protected areas. However, I would also like to inform the distinguished gathering that our farmers are being the brunt of our conservation success. The incidences of human wildlife conflict are reported every day, which often jeopardizes the food and nutrition security of our people. As the country develops, we are also witnessing increasing pressure on our natural resources and the habitat. Nevertheless, with great pride, I would like to inform the meeting that in Bhutan, snow leopards have always been at the helm of our conservation efforts. The snow leopard is a totally protected species in Bhutan, listed under the Schedule 1 of the Forest and Nature Conservation Act, giving them total protection. <laughs> More than 90% of snow leopard habitat in Bhutan are declared protected areas. With the institu institution of GSLAB in 2013, Bhutan implemented the National Snow Leopard and Ecosystem Protection Program from 2013 to 18. Under the NSLAB program, I am proud to declare that Bhutan is amongst the first few range countries to conduct nationwide snow leopard population survey, which was completed in 2016. The survey estimated 96 snow leopards thriving in the mountains of Bhutan. With the information from the nationwide survey, 
The Climate Smart Snow Leopard Conservation Action Plan for Bhutan was formulated in 2018, which will be implement, implemented until 2023. The, the Conservation Action Plan comprehensively includes strategies and actions to conserve viable populations of snow leopards and their prey while mitigating negative impacts on people's livelihood. I'm glad to announce that we are ready for the next nationwide snow leopard population survey to be conducted in 2022, which is in line with the PAWS protocol. The next snow leopard survey will, fully, will be fully funded by the Royal Government of Bhutan through the Bhutan for Life program. However, with the current economic disruptions, we are facing huge funding gaps, especially in implementing the plant activities under, under the Snow Leopard Conservation Action Plan. We highly appreciate and acknowledge the support rendered by partner conservation organizations and the international community for their continued support in conservation of snow leopards and, their, and the mountain ecosystem. And we sincerely look forward and urge additional support during these trying times. Today, as COVID-19 pandemic continues to remind us that humans and wildlife are integrate, integrately connected. As responsible leaders, as conservationists, and as concerned citizens, I would like to call upon all the honorable members and the range countries to strengthen our conservation efforts and minimize disease transmission between wildlife and people to prevent such pandemics in future. Through this statement, I would like to provide our assurance of Bhutan's commitment in our collective efforts to ensure that snow leopards of Bhutan, snow leopards of the world is secured. At the same time, we are also committed to improving the lives and livelihoods of our local people dwelling in the snow leopard habitats. I'm hopeful that our deliberations will be meaningful and that our meeting will significantly contribute to the well-being of snow leopards and all other living beings, including humans, sharing the same habitats. Lastly, I would like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a happy International Snow Leopard Day, which is tomorrow. I wish the meeting a great success. Thank you and Tash Telek. Over to you, Kostup. Thank you, Sonamji. Thank you very much. And as always, uh, not just uh, the fact that Bhutan continues to inspire the whole world with their commitment to nature conservation and green development. Uh, you know, your kind words and inspire, uh, continue to inspire us as well. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I'd like to now invite uh, Dr. Sher Kun from People's Republic of China to kindly make uh, a statement, please. Dr. Sher Kun. So, hello, good morning and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for cheer and everybody here. So. Uh, to give me opportunity to talk uh, about the celebrate conservation in China with uh, all of you here. So I just uh, try to uh, give a very brief uh, introduction uh, for what we have done in last uh, year and the last uh, uh, several years. So uh, as you know, China has the uh, uh, largest snow leopard uh, range habitat and also, uh, yeah, big population. Especially, uh, we have so many habitats in uh, west, northwest mountain areas. We, the first, the first important thing for us is uh, continue to identify where uh, will be the important habitat for snow leopard. Yeah, obviously we have known uh, there are many uh, landscapes uh, are important for snow leopard, but we still lack of uh, detailed information for those areas. So we uh, expanded the study area, uh, yeah, increased uh, survey and monitoring uh, efforts. So supported by not just the government, but also for some yeah, uh, uh, 
yeah, private uh, foundations and uh, NGOs, and not just the NGO inside of China, but also international NGOs. So all resources have been uh, gathered for this important species. Uh, so currently include several new uh, national park. As you know, China is trying to rebuild, uh, protect area uh, management system. Uh, you, the new system names, uh, you know, so uh, national park system. So as a, uh, a major, major style, but also include other protected areas like nature reserve uh, and uh, nature park. So there some new national parks have been uh, built uh, with jointed natural reserves. So increase the, the cover, the range uh, of a snow leopard. So in those, uh, places, I mean, in new national parks, so government uh, invested more uh, money and uh, yeah, uh, management power into those areas. So the snow leopard habitat have been improved and uh, the protection system have been uh, improved too. So in the other side, we are trying to attract more uh, social resources and uh, uh, public powers to give opportunity uh, to uh, all uh, people from different uh, fields. So uh, especially, so people from local area, local farmers, uh, and also uh, citizens to attract them, put more attention and support for snow leopard and other uh, wildlife species. And then, yeah, so the total attention and has been uh, improved. I mean, uh, the situation uh, for celebrity conservation is much better and uh, improved than uh, last uh, several decades. So now many people, not just uh, from government, from uh, uh, research, organizations, but also from, I mean, uh, from uh, natural reserve protect areas and, and also from, so local citizens, local uh, farmers, uh, people. So are trying together to uh, give, to contribute their uh, effort on this important species. So uh, in the other aspect, we also try to uh, improve wildlife uh, conservation education uh, system in China, but not just uh, uh, traditionally we uh, give uh, formal education in, uh, uh, in uh, different schools, but also we improve uh, the nature conservation education into uh, society to uh, attract more and more people uh, join together. So yeah, and also, uh, the wildlife uh, protection, so national wildlife protection, the law will be also uh, renewed in uh, 
this year or early next year. So uh, Snow Leopard is still uh, uh, important and the first class uh, wildlife species within uh, under the, the law. So uh, using this opportunity, we will also uh, try to develop more programs for Snow Leopard conservation and also try to have more collaboration with uh, other range countries, uh, work closely with uh, yeah, GSLAB and all international uh, snow leopard organizations, uh, uh, supporting countries, uh, partners. Yeah, so tomorrow, like uh, mentioned by uh, the officer from Bhutan's, <laughs> sorry, I forgot uh, his name. So tomorrow will be the uh, International Celebrity Day. So let's uh, uh, give my best wishes to uh, Celebrity Conservation and also to all officers and scientists uh, specialists and uh, all uh, attendees here. So uh, let's work together uh, for continually for Singapore conservation in the world. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shakun. Really, uh, I mean, China, after all, is the country with the largest, largest snow leopard distribution. And uh, even a small amount of effort is massive effort uh, for the country. But what you've ex explained here, what you've shown here is a lot of work which is already being done. Thank you and uh, kudos. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to now request um, the, uh, yeah, I'd like to now request uh, Dr. Sunil Sharma uh, on behalf of Republic of India to kindly present uh, the statement uh, on behalf of the country. Uh, Dr. Sunil. Thank you. Thank you, Prasadi. Uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Ministers of Snow Le Leopard Race Countries, District Delegates from Snow Leopard Race Countries, and all the participants. Greetings from India and very good morning. Government of India is happy to participate in the sixth steering committee meeting of the GSLIP program. On behalf of the Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change, Government of India, I congratulate the GSLIP sector, all other snow leopard range countries and partner organization for convening this international virtual meeting. In India, we are privileged to have about 1,28,000 square kilometers of snow leopard habitat in Himalayas. Most of the major rivers of Northern India originate from the glaciers of Himalayas. These rivers form the lifeline for millions of people residing in Indian subcontinent. Therefore, the snow leopard habitat act as a water tower for Indian subcontinent. Since snow leopard is the apex predator of the high altitude Himalayan ecosystem, the government of India considers snow leopard as a flagship species for conservation of the Himalayas. Since 2009, through the pro project Snow Leopard, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, along with six snow leopard range states and union territories in India, namely Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, and union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and union territories of Ladakh have been conserving snow leopards and its habitat through landscape-based approach going beyond the conventional protected area centric approach. Under the project Snow Leopard, large landscapes have been identified for amendment planning using a participatory approach. Amendment plans including include biodiversity monitoring, community-based conservation initiatives, 
conflict mitigation, livelihood enhancement, wildlife crime, and illicit trade mitigation and disease management. The government of India launched the National Protocol on Snow Leopard Population Assessment in India during the fourth GSLAP Steering Committee meeting in 2019. This was the first country specific snow leopard population monitoring protocol. The Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change is supporting the six snow leopard train states and union territories in India for implementation in snow leopard population estimation. The Wildlife Institute of India has been designated as a nodal agency for SPI implementation, and rain states and union territories are implementing snow leopard population estimation in India in coordination with the technical input from NGOs. Also, snow leopard and prey population estimation have been completed in the state of Himachal Pradesh, covering an area of 26,000 square kilometer. This is one of the most large scale surveys ever completed for snow leopard and prey population estimation. The state of Himachal Pradesh has reported a population of between 51 to 73 snow leopard individuals with a density of 0 0.08 to 0 0.37 snow leopard per 100 square kilometers. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, along with the UNDP India and state and union territory government is also implementing a JEF funded project that is Secure Himalaya project that focuses on landscape conservation, mitigation, mitigating illegal trading wildlife, improving livelihoods, and developing communication strategies for knowledge generation and increased awareness. India successfully hosted the Convention on Conservation of Migrated Species, COP30 at Gandhinagar, Gujarat, during February 2020, and is now spearheading the Central Asian Flyway Initiative, which covers numerous wetlands in Indian snow leopard habitat. During the COP13, Gandhinagar Declaration was adopted, which emphasized on ecological connectivity for conservation of species and their habitats. The government of India is also making efforts to strengthen transboundary cooperation for biodiversity conservation, through which scope of transboundary protected areas and peace parks is being explored for the better coordinated management of long-range species. On behalf of the government of India, I look forward to continuing the good work and enhance our collaborative efforts to protect the mountain ecosystem for conservation of snow leopard. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sharma. Uh, uh, it's really uh, nice to know that India will be uh, will be completing its countrywide snow leopard survey assessment by next year using the SPY protocol, if I'm not mistaken, the snow leopard population assessment in India, which is very exciting. Uh, thank you for the statement. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, uh, shuffle a little bit and uh, let me invite um, uh, Mr. Sadikov from Republic of Uzbekistan to kindly make a statement on behalf of the country. Uh, Mr. Sadikov. Дамы и господа, от имени Государственного комитета Республики Узбекистан по экологии и охране окружающей среды и отлично от себя позвольте приветствовать вас в данном мероприятии. Сегодня сохранение численности такого исчезающего вида, как снежный бас, является актуальной проблемой. Согласно экспертным исследованиям, в Узбекистане обитает около 100 особей снежного барса. Как вам известно, в Узбекистане в целях сохранения снежного барса и горных экосистем реализуется совместный проект ГЭФ ПРООН Госком экологии устойчивое управление природными и лесными ресурсами в ключевых горных регионах, важных для глобально значимых видов биоразнообразия, в рамках которого осуществлен ряд мероприятий, направленных на сохранение снежного барса, 
развития охраняемых природных территорий, включающих вместо их его обитания, усовершенствования научно-исследовательской деятельности и укрепления международного сотрудничества. В августе 2021 года в Узбекистане со стороны правительства принят план действий по сохранению снежного барса в Республике Узбекистан на период 2021-2030 годов, подготовленный в рамках выше упомянутого проекта. В этом документе предусмотрена реализация мер по сохранению снежного барса, а также по управлению природными ресурсами и их охране в горных районах страны на ближайшие 10 лет. План действий просматривает реализацию следующих мероприятий. Усиление исследований по изучению и мониторингу состояния высокогорных экосистем и снежного барса путем разработки и утверждения совместной методологии. Внесение изменений и дополнений в нормативные документы и государственные программы направлены на улучшение ландшафтов снежного барса и горных экосистем. Наращивание потенциала персонала и охраняемых природных территорий. Предотвращение деградации и фрагментации высокогорных экосистем за пределами существующих охраняемых природных территорий путем создания двух новых ОПТ в западном Тяншане, заповедника в верховых реки Пескем, это Ташкентская область, и в горном массиве Памира Алая, природного парка Верхний Топалан, это Сурхадаринская область. Предотвращение развития инфраструктуры в ключевых горных районах биоразнообразия. Сохранение биоразнообразия на уровне сообществ в партнерстве местными сообществами. Предотвращение незаконной торговли объектами дикой природы и браконьерства. Экологическое просвещение и повышение осведомленности общественности. Смягчение конфликта между человеком и дикой природой. Развитие возможности получения дохода от местного населения, внедрение системы компенсации потерь домашнего скота из-за нападения хищников. И последнее. Укрепление международного и регионального сотрудничества посредством создания трансграничных рабочих групп по сохранению снежного барса и партнерства с международными правилоохранными НПО. В настоящее время между Казахстаном, Киргизской республикой, Таджикистаном и Узбекистаном подготовлен меморандум о взаимопонимании по вопросам сохранения снежного барса, объектов его добычи, экосистем и ландшафтов по миру Алая и Тяншане. Меморандум будет способствовать также реализации принятых на себя обязательств в рамках Конвенции ООН о биологическом разнообразии и Бонской конвенции по охране мигрующих Видов, видов. Проект про, э, документа поддержан со стороны ДИСЛЭП, одобрен Киргизской республикой, Таджикистаном и Узбекистаном и направлен на одобрение Казахстану. И мы надеемся на, на ближайшее время э, положительного ответа со стороны Казахстана. Не секрет, что Узбекистан представлен богатой фауной и флорой, большим числом эндемичных, и, а также находящихся под угрозой исчезновения и глобально значимых видов, многообразием экосистем. Мы намерены усилить деятельность в сфере сохранения биологического разнообразия, особенно редких и исчезающих видов, имеющихся международное значение. В этих целях планируется создание новых и расширение существующих охраняемых природных территорий, обратив особое внимание на обеспечение охраны мигрующих видов диких животных. В дальнейшей деятельности в области охраны окружающей среды важное значение будет также уделено обеспечению правоприменения, повышению правовой культуры и правосознания населения, развитию современных форм осуществления общественного контроля, повышению эффективности социального партнерства, а также применения инновационных и информационных технологий. Уважаемые дамы и господа, чтобы достичь положительных результатов, от нас требуется консолидации усилий всех заинтересованных сторон, не только на национальном или на региональном, а и международном уровнях. Цель глобальной программы по сохранению снежного барса и экосистем GSLAP – создать действенную площадку для выработки согласованных практических мер, направленных 
на решение реальных проблем, объединив их заинтересованных сторон, включая госструктуры и местного сообщества. В этой связи хочу отметить необходимость и важность работы международных НПО по сохранению снежного барса, таких как Фонд по сохранению снежного барса и Организация по сохранению снежного барса в Узбекистане для усилия нашей работы в этом направлении. Мы готовы принять и наладить работу этих и других организаций в Узбекистане. Шестое заседание руководящего комитета поставило перед собой задачу еще большего расширения взаимо взаимодействия сторон программы. Еще раз выражаем благодарность организаторам мероприятия. Данная встреча даст, создаст платформу для установления точки соприкосновения сторон и развития сотрудничества в деле сохранения снежного барса и его экосистем. Благодарю за внимание. Sorry, I just had a little challenge here, but uh, yeah, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Sadeko. Uh, can you all hear me? I'm having a little difficulty. Yeah. yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Just a second. Right. So with that, um, I'd like to now request uh, a long time. Strong champion uh, uh, Irina Fominich from the Russian Federation to kindly make a statement on behalf of uh, the Russian Federation. Uh, Irina, over to you, please. Спасибо огромное, коллеги, и рада искренне вас приветствовать от имени Министерства природных ресурсов и экологии Российской Федерации из России, из Москвы. Хотя бы так, но всех увидеть, услышать и искренне надеюсь, что все в порядке со здоровьем. Конечно, в Российской Федерации э, придается огромное значение сохранению в целом биоразнообразия и в данном случае конкретно снежному барсу. В связи с чем мне бы хотелось искренне поблагодарить секретариат за организацию мероприятия. Сейчас это не просто делать. И тем более не просто добиваться каких-то результатов с учетом пандемии и всех карантинных мер, которые все мы, конечно, на себе ощущаем. Тем не менее, Российская Федерация проводит большое количество мероприятий, необходимых в части сохранения снежного барса, которые предусмотрены у нас стратегией по сохранению этого прекрасного, уникального вида. И сейчас мне хотелось бы, чтобы основной доклад о статусе этого животного сделал наш основной эксперт. Александр Карнаухов, поэтому позвольте передать ему слово. Спасибо. Thank you, Irina. Thank you, Costa. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear colleagues. So, what has been uh, done within the framework of the slab process in Russia during the reporting period? Transboundary Snow Leopard Survey along Russian-Mongolian border in three sites was carried out. Uh, first observation of Snow Leopard in Mongolian part of Eastern Cyan Ridge using by camera traps was done. <coughs> there were two males uh, previously fixed by cameras in Russian part. The next nationwide Snow Leopard census is planned to be carried out in the beginning of 2022. In October, Snow Leopard monitoring program based on post protocol was approved by the government. Also, the transboundary Argali census is under process now in collaboration with Mongolian team. We agreed with them to provide it every two years. And besides that, Snow Leopard conservation strategy has been updated during the reporting period and new roadmap for Snow Leopard conservation has been developed and discussed with all stakeholders. A new case of illegal wildlife trade was registered to Snow Leopard pelts were seized by custom in Bernal City. DNA-based expertise highlighted that these pails were originated from a time part of Snow Leopard range. Series of trainings on law enforcement for protect terrorist rangers uh, within the framework of presidential grant uh, were provided in rep republics of Altai, Tova, and Buratia. Three public anti-poaching brigades uh, were established in these regions. 
qualification improvement, improvement on biological forensic expertise for the Veterinary Committee of Altai Republic was carried out. At least 12 expertise for environmental protection agencies was done, were done in the last three months. Training uh, for protected area staff on GIS was held in Altai Republic in September 2021. Besides, we started uh, to implement smart patrolling system in two protected areas in Selugensky National Park and Altaisky National Reserve. Monitoring of human wildlife conflicts was done in snow leopard habitat in Altai Republic. Previously, it was a problem only for Tuvai Republic, but now new case of snow leopard attack on livestock was absorbed in South Tua Ridge in Altai Republic, and we started a new a new project on minimizing of the conflicts uh, in the, this area. Regarding to the financial issues, uh, WWF Russia invests in snow leopard conservation in Altai Sayan eco region at least uh, 300,000 US dollars annually. For example, conservation departments of Selugensky National Park and Tovan Nature, Nature Park uh, were supported with transportation by WWF Russia this year. But of course, the main part of snow leopard conservation budget is budgetary funds of protect areas located in snow leopard habitat. Thank you very much for attention and uh, let me express my best wishes for all of us with International Snow Leopard Day, which we'll celebrate tomorrow. Kostuk, I yield the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Alexander. Uh, I'm sorry for uh, uh, Kostup has had to leave uh, because of a technical difficulty, but uh, hopefully he'll be joining soon. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to welcome Mr. D uh, Mr. Suleiman Varaichi from Pakistan to take the floor. Bismillah uh, rahman rahim Thank you very much, uh, uh, the Honorable Chair, distinguished delegates, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is indeed a great pleasure for me and honor to be with all of you today. Uh, you know, the, that marks the sixth meeting of the steering committee of uh, GSLAB. Pakistan is indeed bestowed with a wide variety of ecosystems and habitats ranging from the Arabian Sea in the south to the second highest peak in the world, K2, in the north. The diverse topography and climatic conditions uh, cover a wide range of habitats and harbor many species of global significance, such as the elusive snow leopard. Pakistan has always shown strong political commitment to the cause of environment and sustainable development, thereby signing many international multilateral agreements and implementing these by developing national action plans and strategies. As far as the conservation of snow leopards and their ecosystem in Pakistan, the government of Pakistan has already taken concrete steps to achieve the national goals of the GSLEP. So researchers in Pakistan have explored more than 50% of the snow leopard range to understand the ecology and conservation needs of this majestic cat and its wild prey. This level of habitat coverage in hardcore research is unmatched in the snow leopard range countries. The research findings were then translated into the identification of conservation hotspots and expansion of protected areas in the snow leopard landscapes. Three new protected areas, including two national parks and a biosphere reserve covering 0.66 million hectares area were established in the snow leopard landscapes. Similarly, may used to mitigate and compensate human snow leopard conflict are operational in, in over 50 valleys in the snow leopard range, over 300,000 livestock through biannual vaccination drives in tandem with the rangeland management mayors of the forest departments and other allied uh, stakeholders. Uh, Pakistan has also uh, drafted the national strategic plan uh, to ensure ecologically responsible tourism in the snow leopard landscapes and successfully implemented a model uh, community-based conservation uh, tourism project in the Northern Pakistan. 
these activities are supported by tailor-made educational and awareness raising activities at local, regional, and national levels. So a thematic audiovisual printed resource material is developed and disseminated among the communities and at different uh, uh, levels uh, of interest. So the 10 billion tree tsunami project, which is the flagship project of government of Pakistan and the prime minister's protected area initiatives, uh, along with green stimulus package, which were announced in uh, the COVID, uh, uh, post COVID era, were recognized by the world at large and were also replicated in many other countries. All these initiatives do support the snow leopards, the wild prey and habitat conservation by fostering wildlife surveillance systems at grassroots levels and engagement of the communities at a much uh, higher uh, level. So the government of Pakistan has recently designed projects like uh, to tackle illegal wildlife trade and enhance community-based conservation. All these efforts will result in the accomplishment of Pakistan's national goals and contribute to the future where humans live in harmony with nature. So in the end, on behalf of the government of Pakistan, let me reiterate that Pakistan will continue extending its support to the global snow leopard community and the GSLAP in achieving its goals and targets set for 2022. I wish you a very successful meeting and fruitful deliberations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Suleiman Barich. Uh, and I'm, I'm really sorry, I, I lost a bit of connectivity in between the perils of technology. Well, with that, uh, I'd like to now request uh, Mr. Saidov Abdul Sator from the Republic of Tajikistan to kindly uh, pr uh, 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 kindly present the statement on behalf of uh, Tajikistan, Mr. Abdul Sator. Большое спасибо, уважаемые участники управляющего комитета глобальной программы GSLEP. Дамы и господа, для меня большое удовольствие сегодня выступить от имени Национальной Академии Наук Таджикистана и поприветствовать всех участников сегодняшнего заседания управляющего комитета. Таджикистан, как горная страна, занимает особое место в сохранении Снежного Барса. Более 93% территории страны покрыта горами и свыше 50% общей территории Таджикистана находится на высоте 3000 метров. Все это... Барса. Я хочу... Э от имени Национальной Академии выразить, что в последние годы вопросы сохранения редких исчезающих видов животных и растений являются приоритетным направлением научных исследований Национальной Академии Наук Таджикистана и других вузов нашей страны. И Снежный Барс как ключевой вид имеет приоритета для проведения научно-исследовательских работ. Национальная академия наук Таджикистана регулярно проводит мониторинг состояния популяции снежного барса на ключевых участках ареала и для проведения мониторинга привлечен большое количество молодых ученых. И за последние годы наши ученые применяют новейшие технологии для мониторинга снежного барса. Это применение методики SLIMS, применение фото- и видеоловушек, а также идентификация особей снежного барса на основе анализа ДНК. Таким образом, в Таджикистане в настоящее время накоплен большой фактический материал по распространению и состоянию 
популяции снежного барса. Начиная с 2016 года в Таджикистане реализуется проект охрана и устойчивое использование горных экосистем Памира Алая и Тяншаня для сохранения снежного барса. В рамках этого проекта проделана большая работа по охране и сохранению экосистем снежного барса. И Национальная академия наук Таджикистана является партнером этого проекта. Я уверен, что сегодняшнее заседание управляющего комитета даст новый импульс, чтобы сосредоточить усилия и поработать сообща для сохранения целостной ареала Снежного Барса в пределах 12 стран Азиатского континента, где имеет распространение Снежный Барс. Большое спасибо за внимание. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdusator. Um, uh, with that, I'd like to now request a representation from uh, Republic of Kazakhstan. Um, unfortunately, we, until late night yesterday, we didn't have a confirmation. Um, do we have Mr. Arman from Kazakhstan over here? Yes, hello. Please, Mr. Arman. Uh, thanks for inviting me to this important event on snow leopards. In Kazakhstan, snow leopard historically from ancient times is a national symbol, emblem of our country. All our great predecessors were also called the ghosts of the mountains as the snow leopards are being called here in, in this country. So I represent the International Snow Leopard Foundation of Kazakhstan, established three years ago, based in Nur Sultan, the capital of the country, previously Astana. But our work is throughout the habitat uh, areas of habitat of snow leopards. So uh, I would like to inform colleagues, this is first time I take part here. Last year I was with the UNDP Kazakhstan as head of sustainable development and previously in oil and gas. So that uh, starting next year, the government of Kazakhstan, Ministry of Ecology, Geology and Natural Resources of Kazakhstan together with our foundation will be launching first ever in Kazakhstan project on a pilot center for preservation, rehabilitation and breeding of snow leopards in Ilya Latao National Park in Almaty, which is a natural habitat of for snow leopards. We are talking to UNDP. We have received confirmation from WWF and uh, sovereign funds of several countries that they will also support. Recently, we also invited Chinese fund Paradise of Jack Ma to take part in our event. And also about two weeks ago during um, inter-regional forum of Kazakhstan and Russia, we have shared our presentation with the Russian colleagues in Tatarstan in Moscow through our embassy, because as far as we know, this region of Russian Federation plans to also uh, construct center for breeding of snow leopards. So why doing this uh, separately? Let's make a joint project, which will be a success. So our uh, foundation towards about it, it's only three years old, but, and it's not uh, commercial, it's charitable, non-governmental, but we do big work here, uh, uh, solely and 100% on snow leopards. We uh, finance and uh, write books on snow leopards. Good for us in Kazakhstan, snow leopards habitat is from East Kazakhstan region, Katon Karagai National Park, going south to Almaty region and mountains of Eliela Tau and Tinshan. Then going even south, it's uh, Jambul region, Merke uh, uh, resort. And finally in Turkestan, uh, Oblast or region, Aksu Jabaglin National Park. Uh, recently, I have to share this information with you. I think it's important. In uh, Altin Emil National Park, 200 kilometers from Almaty, the sustainable habitat for snow leopards was um, observed together by our foundation and the Institute of Zoology of Ministry of Education and Science of Kazakhstan, who are our partners and big professionals in this scientific work. 
with the estimate uh, population of 10 species. They didn't exist there before in a sustainable way. So um, I'm glad that using this opportunity, we can share this wonderful information with you. Uh, also important thing that in Kazakhstan now, there is a new state program called JASL Kazakhstan, Green Kazakhstan 21-25. And first ever in 30 years of our independence, the whole sector or paragraph about snow leopard work have appeared there. Ministry of Ecology have done this. Uh, and the KPI is to increase the population of snow leopards in Kazakhstan from the current estimate 130 to 140 in five years. And two components how to achieve that goal. The first is national wide analytical updated program on snow leopard habitat, uh, cooperation with international organizations, work done by national parks. And secondly, this mentioned center for uh, conservation, uh, preservation and uh, rehabilitation of snow leopards in Almaty. So, Thanks for this opportunity and hopefully we'll meet each other physically as soon as this COVID is over to exchange views and to find ways of cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Arman. Uh, we'd like to now request uh, any delegation from Mongolia. If you have anybody from Mongolia. There we go. Mr. Chimidorj from Hello. the WWF will be representing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chimidorj. Thank you. Thank you very much for your invitation for this important meeting. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, Mongolia is one of the few countries supporting distribution ranges of snow leopard and is home to the second largest population of the snow leopard in the world. Therefore, Mongolia committed to play a significant role in conservation of this charming and distinctive species. So in this regard, Mongolia is a signatory to the Bishkek Declaration, so which was endorsed by Snow Leopard Range countries, made its contribution in implementation of the long-term global Snow Leopard and Ecosystem Protection Program since 2013. The government of Mongolia adopted its national program for ready, rare and rare wildlife conservation and also a national program for the biodiversity conservation in 2011 and also in 2015, respectively. So under these strategic policy documents, a number of most facilitated uh, policy actions and initiatives are undertaken. So one of, the, one of these actions is to protect and preserve and also restore populations and ranges of endangered wildlife species in the country through scientific approach and practices. So I would like to share only one update on the health of Mongolia, which is the national snow leopard population and distribution range assessment that has been conducted by the WWF Mongolia, Snow Leopard Conservation Foundation, GSLEP, uh, and also national research and academic insti institutes and researchers. So the nationwide snow leopard population assessment is the first ever comprehensive in Mongolia and was conducted between 2000 17 and 2020, over 500 contributors, including researchers, students, wildlife rangers, and the local people have gathered vast amount of material and then also data from the field by working in rugged mountains areas and also often facing extreme weather conditions during the past three years. Subsequently, mm -hmm. Researchers worked on collected data for many months, years to organize, analyze, and obtain final results. The survey covered around over 400,000 square kilometers area of potential snow leopard habitats in all over Mongolia, from west to east, from north to south. According to our results, the countrywide snow leopard population was estimated to be 953 adult snow leopards across the entire snow leopard habitat of over 300,000 square kilometers in in Mongolia. The 95% confidence intervals indicate that the population could be between 806 and 1,127 adult individuals. So amongst the 12 snow leopard range countries in the world, Mongolia has initiated and undertaken the detailed studies and assessment of snow leopard in the country according to the population assessment of the world's snow leopard guidelines with comprehensive scientific research methods and techniques, 
through multi-parties engagement within an entire potential species habitat. So in that capacity, these studies and assessments may be a model for rest of the range countries in the world according to our consideration. These assessment results show an important driver for advancing endangered wildlife population research and monitoring against the current development and conservation needs through advanced scientific technological uh, applications and innovative and informative approaches for either improved environmental conservation management practices or improved public awareness. All these stages have been defined and proven by the assessment results and findings in date. So may all dedicate efforts for the biodiversity mm -hmm. conservation in Mongolia, in the North South, Snowflake, and the Range countries be enhanced and enriched with research-based policy in planning and all the best practices be replicated and shared through the world. Thank you very much for your kind attention and good luck for the GSTAP Steering Committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chimidurj. Uh, a really nice and a brief and a concise update on behalf of uh, Mongolia. Uh, with that, we come. Uh, we we conclude the country updates, but we have uh, our partner and sponsor statements. And for that, I'd like to first request uh, the executive director of International Snow Leopard Trust, Dr. Charudat Mishra, to please. Uh, uh, present the partner statement on behalf of the Snow Leopard Trust, Dr. Charu Mishra. Thanks very much, Kostub. Excellencies and distinguished guests, it's an honor for me to be here today and to be able to address you and welcome you to the sixth steering committee meeting of the GSLEP program. As many of you are perhaps aware, the International Snow Leopard Trust has been a partner uh, to this program right from its inception. And it's been a great uh, privilege and honor for us to have been supporting the Secretariat and through the Secretariat working with the governments of all 12 Snow Leopard Range countries to promote our collective common cause of uh, Snow Leopard conservation in Asia's high mountains. I'd really like to thank the government of um, Kyrgyzstan for having hosted the Secretariat to this program right from the beginning. And I would like to congratulate um, Her Excellency, Ms. Dinara Kutmanova for the elevation of what used to be the State Agency for Environmental Protection and Forestry in Kyrgyzstan to the Ministry of, of uh, the full-fledged Ministry of um, Natural Resources, Ecology and Technical Supervision of the Kyrgyz Republic. I'd also like to thank the government of Nepal for co-chairing the uh, steering committee of the GSLEP program and I'd like to extend my warm uh, welcome to the new minister, Excellency Sri Ram Sahai Prasad Yadav. Welcome, sir. Uh, the Snow Leopard Trust is, uh, continues to remain committed to the GSLEP program and I'd like to assure the GSLEP uh, Secretariat of our continued support. I would also like to acknowledge our uh, current funding partners, uh, particularly the uh, UNEP's Vanishing Treasures Program and the Whitley Fund for Nature, who continue to support the activities of the GSLEP Secretariat. We're thankful to Jeff UNDP and the USAID. They have been very significant supporters in the past. And I do hope that they will resume their support to the activities of the Secretariat in the near future. Um, I'll keep this brief. I'm looking forward to the further deliberations and, this, um, and decisions and, uh, taken during this meeting. And I'll end with the hope that next time we meet, it will be in person and it will be somewhere near the habitat, near the home of the snow leopard. And until then, uh, please stay safe and take care. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charu. Thank you for that brief, concise, but uh, important statement on behalf of the Snow Leopard Trust. Uh, with that, I'd like to now request um, uh, Mr. Salman from uh, the United Nations Environment Program to please uh, uh, present the statement. Mr. S Dr. Salman Hussain, please. Thank you very much, um, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for the invitation. 
Um, UNEP, as you know, is an observer member of the steering committee and a partner and sponsor um, for the Vanishing Treasures program. I want to give some context. UNEP's new medium term strategy, which sits very comfortably with this program, sets out actions on three major pillars climate, nature, and pollution, which, while recognizing the interdependency amongst all three. The objectives include halting and reversing biodiversity loss, a similar managing natural resources, and increasing resilience to climate change. And needless to say, ecosystem restoration, climate change adaptation, and wildlife conservation are at the core of our work. And the current Vanishing Treasures Programme, funded by the Government of Luxembourg, is an example where we aim to maximize synergies between these various areas, focusing on charismatic mountain species. In addition, a recently approved international climate initiative funded project on climate change impacts on mountain and migratory species in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan will be picking up pace by the beginning of next year. It will be gathering data and exploring how ecosystem-based adaptation and climate smart conservation can help improve landscape connectivity for species such as the Gali sheep, Bakara deer and sioux leopards, with the aim of increasing the resilience of both wildlife and communities to climate change. The project involved local partners in three countries in the last four years. So with our ongoing interventions and future interventions, Europe looks forward to continue to support slow leopard conservation efforts in Central Asia in several ways, including through cooperation with partners. This includes data collection and target species, climate change impacts and socioeconomics of local communities, as well as on the implementation of pilot interventions, investigating an economic case for these interventions, and disseminate information on the approaches and results. Through innovative partnerships, including with the private sector, we're also employing state-of-the-art technology for data management, data analysis, and to raise awareness about this iconic species. For example, within the Vanishing Treasures framework, artificial intelligence is used to identify snow leopards and camera trapped images, resulting from monitoring efforts, as well as to determine the presence of prey species as marmots from aerial photography. Another example is the use of 360 degree snow leopard footage that helped to raise UNEP's 2020 World Environment Day story on snow leopards in Kyrgyzstan to the attention of US media broadcasters. The footage will also be incorporated in the unique virtual reality experience as part of the highly interactive exhibition of vanishing treasures, which will eventually be hosted in the region. So, in general, we are glad to see GSLEP and its partners spearhead in the use of technology to inspire empathy and generate passion. And this is very much aligned with UNEP's medium term strategy on digitalization. We're confident that our local partners are putting in every effort to help turn the tide for snow leopards and mountain communities in both Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. A key result of our work so far is snow leopard climate change vulnerability brief for Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan that was launched on the occasion of International Mountain Day last year, providing insights on climate change impacts on biology of snow leopards and mountain ecosystems and communities in these countries. As we speak, consultations with communities in both countries are ongoing to determine the needs and feasibility of pilot interventions that will increase the resilience of snow leopard habitats and mountain communities in the face of climate change. Like many other areas, COVID-19 is also affecting our work and requires us to change our plans and habits. It has important consequences of human, na human nature relationships, especially with impending climate change impacts. Investigating the relationship between human and nature, including the origin of zoonotic disease, is also amongst the key pillars of UNEP's work to tackle the COVID-19 crisis, notably in our involvement in the context of the One Health Initiative and beyond. UNEP wishes to thank the government of the Kazakh region on taking a strong lead in global snow leopard conservation, stable mountain development trans transboundary conservation, um, referencing the, the recent UN General Assembly resolution and also to thank the, the, the government and Republic of Tajikistan for its readiness and continuous support within the context of our Vanishing Treasures program, particularly in cooperation with the first national consultation meetings in the frame of the program. We are convening two side events in the aftermath of the, of the G GESLEF meeting to conduct national consultation meeting for Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, during which we will inform relevant national stakeholders in more detail about the Vanishing Treasures outputs. We very much look forward to continuing working with respective government agencies, the State Committee on Ecology and Climate of the Kyrgyz Republic, and the Committee on Environmental Protection of the Government of the Republic of Tajikistan. Finally, with a new global biodiversity framework under development, 
that we hopefully will be adopted in 2022, we also highly welcome the effort of all snow leopard range countries in putting snow leopard conservation high on the political agenda. My sincere thanks. Thank you very much uh, for that powerful speech, uh, Dr. Salman Hussain. Um, with that, I'd like to now invite Mr. Keshav Verma. He's going to join through a video. Just give me a second while I set him up. Uh, good morning, Excellencies, and all the senior representatives from the Snow Leopard Range countries who are present in this important steering committee meeting of the GSLEP. I would like to particularly welcome and uh, convey our appreciation to the ministry in uh, to the new ministry, actually headed by Ms. Dinara Kutmanov. Uh, in Kyrgyzstan. The government in Kyrgyzstan has provided us with great support and has anchored the Secretariat and the program. I would like to particularly thank them for their commitment and uh, for the passion with which the program is being led by the government uh, in Kyrgyzstan. I would also like to congratulate uh, uh, the new minister, Honorable uh, Ram Sahai Prashad from uh, Nepal. Nepal has been always a very proactive member, both of the GSLEP uh, program as well as the Global Tiger Initiative. So, and they have all, all chaired uh, the GSLEP uh, steering committee. So, they have, I would especially like to convey to the government of Nepal uh, our appreciation for their support. Now, it is uh, whenever I uh, reflect on the importance of the snow leopard. One thing that comes very clearly uh, in the forefront is how important is snow leopard as an indicator of high, high mountain ecology. We are all knit together by culture. All the snow leopard range countries are knit together by a culture, which is a colorful cult culture of herders, of pastures, of a romance in which uh, people and communities live in the mountains. I often go and visit them in Kyrgyzstan. I re lately, we have been doing this in Kashmir. These are very special people. And they are also special people who are actually helping to progress this program forward. All the work that is taking place in the countries uh, in order to move the snow leopard agenda forward is truly important, especially the people who are in the front lines. I, I really respect uh, them, the pride with the passion with which they work, both in the snow leopard as well in tiger conservation. There are huge challenges that are there. You know, illegal trade and traffic continues to be, surprisingly, still a very uh, important area. And it hasn't actually, the demand hasn't uh, abated at all. We have suffered for two years, no, not only in terms of human health, not only in terms of millions of mortality, but the economies of countries have been completely brutalized by this uh, epidemic. I would like to congratulate GSLEP and the Snow Leopard uh, Program, uh, Snow Leopard Trust, for the work they are doing on uh, establishing this connection. It is truly exemplary, the work, uh, and it is needed. You know, it is so relevant just now, the, uh, the, uh, the research and the support that is required, both for uh, uh, wildlife as well as domestic animals, and how <clears throat> health is clearly important. I also often reflect, uh, and I am uh, really, truly feel bad about one fact, that countries have been coming out with their... Uh, stimulant packages, economic stimulant packages. I mean, I'm in the US, the next package is another uh, trillion dollar package, which is being thought through. 
They have already infused uh, more than $3 trillion in the economy. The economy is hot. But there is very little talk about environment. There is very little talk about the importance of nature, importance of living with nature, the criticality. As civilization is moving into areas which are pure wilderness, and we have to be very alert about this interaction. I, I think there is a need for great advocacy, and I would like to request all the countries to really uh, take this up very seriously. We do not want another COVID, and we do not want another COVID affecting humans as well as uh, wildlife and even uh, domestic cattle and other things. I would like to convey the, uh, my special appreciation to UNDP and Jeff for the project that uh, uh, we could do in cooperation with them. I think we have been able to really implement it to the satisfaction of the agencies, uh, to the satisfaction of the programs. What we need uh, is a further reassertion of this confidence and to be able to do more pro programs. Uh, I think we are well equipped. We have the capacity and there is in every country a lot of will to move forward. So there is a need to go in for more programs. I think as we emerge out of COVID, there is a need to replenish uh, the pipeline of projects. Uh, we have already lost two years in this and I would request countries to really take it up. I would also request UNDP. The program is headed by my very dear friend, Midori, uh, who has been an exceptional um, advocate of wildlife and snow leopard conservation. So I would request them. I would also request this new CEO of Jeff to consider this and to take more programs into the front line. One of the issues, uh, <clears throat> which I have been trying to push, is that we need more resources. Uh, and uh, countries have to put in more budgets in their programs. They have to think very seriously about the uh, you know, interaction between nature and human health and human uh, existence. Actually, it is critical that we do understand it. I mean, if we don't understand it in spite of COVID, it's such, so ironical that we can continue to go back to business as usual. We have to do new thinking in this regard. So I would really request that we take up opportunities and also do advocacy within the country to increase the budget, national budgets. Plus, there is a need to create more public-private partnerships. There is, I think, with Advocacy, I think uh, Charu, uh, the CEO of SLT has done great work. Uh, Costab has reached out and created a lot of public-private partnerships in terms of advocacy and in terms of, uh, you know, stimulating donor interest. We have to br bring industry and business and bring them in into the, you know, it may be remote, it may be all snow, but they have to understand how inextricably their life is linked to the existence, to the ecology of these high mountains where the snow leopard dwells. I would like to end this by again emphasizing the need for countries which are, uh, you know, showing strong uh, demand for, uh, for wildlife parts and derivatives. I think I'd like to request countries to really take it up very seriously. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, uh, all of you, thank you very much. Uh, that was Mr. Kesha Verma, the CEO of Global Tiger Initiative Council, and also a senior advisor to the GSLEP program. Um, unfortunately, due to time difference and uh, some other logistical challenges, uh, our colleagues from UNDP have had to leave, but they have left behind a statement. Uh, if if uh, the Honorable Chair is okay, I'd like to read out the statement on behalf of UNDP. 
Uh, the statement says, Dear colleagues, on behalf of UNDP, I'd like to confirm our support to the activities of the countries in the area of conservation of snow leopard habitat. It is pleasing to see commitments of your governments to conserve nature and use it sustainably. UNDP recognizes that health, healthy ecosystems underpin global economic development. We need to change the way we plan and use our resources and take into account nature regenerative capacities through this through its G, uh, through its jeff supported programs and through its biodiversity finance initiatives which is also known as biofin undp helps government uh, governments for repurposing of negative financing such as agriculture and fishery subsidies and will maintain that help we are happy to report that we are present in eight countries of the snow leopard range and we have worked to mobilize over 100 million US dollars in funding so far. We are committed to continue to support countries in nature conservation and sustainable economic use and uh, wishing the steering committee productive work with apologies, uh, he's had to leave. Uh, so these were the statements from our partner organizations. Um, now I'd like to request uh, just give me a second. Yes, so now I'd like to request uh, 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 Ms. Irina Fominik, uh, the, the head of delegation from the Russian Federation, to please help release one of the outputs uh, that the GSLIP program has been able to bring together by, uh, by collaborating with researchers, public health specialists, and experts from various streams. And this would be the document which, uh, which is on understanding and managing the increasing risk of emerging infectious diseases in Asia's mountains. Uh, Irina, uh, may I request you to please uh, help release this book? Yes. Dear Kostub, thank you very much. Distinguished delegates and experts, friends. I'm very pleased to release the display policy brief number 12. It is understanding and managing the increasing risk of emerging infectious disease in Asia's high mountain. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown us that all humanity anywhere in the world is connected to each other. And it has also shown, it has also shown us how closely the health of humans is linked to each other and to the health of domestic animals and wildlife. And the still unfolding human tragedies and economic setbacks due to the pandemic have shown us how serious and important the issue of healthcare and disease management is. To keep people healthy, we must keep our environment and wildlife and domestic animals healthy. This timely and pertinent policy brief provides us overview of known pandemic through human history. It shows us that such pan uh, pandemics and related tragedies are not new, but that the frequency is increasing due, uh, due to environmental degradation, climate change, and globalization. The report cautions us that even high mountain habitats of the snow leopard are no longer safe from a disease perspective, and there is a need to link conservation efforts with strengthening human, wildlife, and domestic animal health care. The policy brief uh, provides a series of recommendations to our government to monitor and mitigate the risk of disease emergence in snow leopard landscape. Intensifying disease uh, surveillance and research is crucial toward building robust health system. Early detection of disease outbreaks and knowledge exchange amongst snow leopard range countries is crucial for wildlife and local people.
And following the release of this policy brief, I would request my colleagues from all our countries to prioritize national efforts and in governmental cooperation embedded in better disease management in snow leopard landscapes by strengthening conservation efforts and linking them with stronger human and animal health care. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Irina. Very, very uh, grateful for you to read out the, uh, the key elements of the disease strategy. Um, with that, now I'd like to invite uh, the head of delegation from the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Mr. Suleiman Varaj, to kindly help uh, release the, uh, in fact, to help launch the portal on uh, illegal wildlife trade and unusual encounters with snow leopards. Uh, Suleiman Saab, over to you, please. Do we have uh, Suleiman Saab around? I can see him. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe there is a connection issue. Mm, okay. Um, in his absence, allow me to quickly uh, introduce the document. Just give me a second, please. Just a second. Right. So uh, as you all know, poaching and illegal wildlife trade have remained key threats to snow leopards for decades. And data about the prevalence of this threat remains scant. Having access to robust data on poaching and illegal wildlife trade is necessary to effectively address this problem and strengthen enforcement efforts. Considerable effort the amount of uh, data on poaching of snow leopards and illegal wildlife trade has been generated by various organizations, but the information has mostly remained scattered in various places. It is commend commendable that several such organizations and individuals joined hands uh, with the GSTEP Secretariat to create a robust collaborative data set that is the Global Snow Leopard Illegal Wildlife Crime Database. To continue collaboration and improve information sharing, the GSLIP program is launching two data portals, uh, the Global Snow Leopard Illegal Wildlife Crime Database and the Unusual Encounters Database. Both of these are accessible through one, uh, uh, one link. The Global Illegal Wildlife Trade Database is expected to help improve conservation efforts and facilitate effective monitoring whereas the unusual encounter database collates information of all types of snow leopard and human interactions. And these can range from sightings of one or more snow leopards coming across abandoned cubs, injured snow leopards, or instances where snow leopards have killed livestock. Uh, it's, it's our pleasure, uh, it's a collective pleasure on behalf of uh, the GSLIP Secretariat to launch these two resources. And we are very hopeful that they will help, uh, uh, help the conservation fraternity and uh, the range countries better protect snow leopards by fighting poaching and better managing snow leopard encounters and more importantly collecting valuable information that is available uh, that can be generated and used uh, effectively so uh, these were the two uh, products that we were hoping to release um, now, allow me to please, uh, uh, if I may request the Honorable Minister from Nepal to kindly, oops, sorry, let me stop this video. Yeah, I'd like to now request the Honorable Minister uh, uh, Ram Sahai Prasadji to please uh, give a concluding remark for the first session. After this, we will be headed to the next session, which is a GSLIP update and update of some programs uh, followed by the technical session. Sir. Um, thank you, Christoph. Uh, thank you for giving this opportunity. Uh, with the kind concept of, uh, consent of our Honorable Minister, 
I would like to say some uh, concluding remarks uh, from Nepal. Um, uh, this is, in fact, uh, very much uh, uh, and a vital uh, platform to have uh, uh, this discussion after a long time uh, regarding the uh, and uh, this has been very much a successful uh, meeting today uh, for bringing uh, the global uh, conservationist partners and, and uh, concerning other people uh, including Experts and other concerning people. This uh, the um, summary of this um, uh, meeting. Uh, this is very much important to have uh, enlightened about the country updates of each and every countries uh, whosoever are involved in conservation of snow leopard all over uh, the world, uh, especially uh, the uh, the uh, governments and concerning other uh, agencies uh, to protect uh, and. Uh, uh, co work with uh, the concerning uh, local communities and partners all over the world. Uh, so, a good uh, direction of uh, conserving uh, sonar level and its uh, high altitude ecosystem. Um, uh, to it. Uh, and uh, uh, this is very much inspiring that. Uh, All, uh, all the countries, uh, governments, and partners, they have been very much committed to have um, to to work together uh, to work uh, jointly for um, uh, having um, uh, conservation in favor of in 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 the, for the good cause of uh, uh, sonar labor conservation and uh, high altitude ecosystem uh, for the um, for um, uh, having. Um, uh, uh, To have joint work uh, together in the. In addition to that, uh, this, the, there are a couple of uh, uh, things that uh, many of the countries have uh, the uh, strategies, uh, uh, conservation strategies, and action plans. Uh, in some countries, uh, we have been uh, already in in place to to uh, implement the plan, and some of the countries have uh, in a, in a line to prepare. Uh, the um, to prepare and to revise the action plans for the future. Um, uh, the most important thing is uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, the um, uh, context of Nepal. We have come across that uh, uh, during our um, conservation practices uh, in partnership with local communities and other agencies, uh, and uh, um, uh, doing some research works in the recent days, in especially in Safe Ocean National Parks. We have come up with that uh, some of the incidences have come, uh, we have faced some of the incidences of uh, sonar leopard death. So uh, this has been very much alarming that uh, this might uh, this might trigger for the illegal trade uh, across the border or even within the country. So um, for this, uh, we have to work together. For that, for this, uh, we have uh, we have been uh, in an institutional uh, institutional arrangement and implementation. Uh, through the SAVIN, South Asian uh, Wildlife um, Enforcement Network, uh, in which uh, some uh, seven, eight countries have been involved. And that way, uh, also we can get uh, support from uh, each other. And also we have been involving uh, security agencies of uh, the, uh, within the country and also across the countries uh, like Interpol and some other uh, related agencies. That way, now we can work still um, uh, further for the good cause of um, sonar leopard conservation. And I hope uh, from this uh, uh, very um, after, um, very uh, kind of in, in, uh, initial um, uh, meeting after the uh, two years of uh, gap uh, due to the um, COVID pandemics, we'll uh, be able to work together and uh, support each other for the good cause of sonar leopard, leopard conservation. So uh, again, on behalf of Nepal, with a uh, with the kind consent of Honorable Minister uh, Ramsai Prasad Yadav, I would uh, congratulate all of you and uh, thank you all for uh, having this uh, meeting. And hope uh, in uh, very near future we will have separate meetings with uh, with um, the um, West uh, country and um, between bilateral and multilateral meetings in the days to come. I would again thank you all.
and congratulate for having the successful meeting today. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for those kind words. Uh, but just to let you know, we're not uh, the meeting is not over yet. We'll 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 uh, <laughs> we'll appreciate your support and your uh, presence in the next uh, three sessions as well. Uh, uh, before we get to the next uh, session, uh, uh, which is a uh, which is the session on updates, where we will be giving you a quick update about the, what the GSLIP program has been up to. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Ranjini, uh, will talk about the country updates, a summary of country updates, and Dr. Ian Darbak will talk about pause. Uh, I'd like to uh, 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 I'd like to propose a two minutes break, but before we go on the break, I, I just want to call out and say a big thank you to my colleague, Dr. Ranjini Murli, who took over while I was struggling with some sort of problems. Uh, and, you know, as they say, uh, all problems come at one point and everything crashed. My computer crashed, my camera crashed, my phone crashed, and then I was trying to get back. But thankfully, Dr. Murali, who was such a great support, was able to uh, take care and uh, let the even move uh, smoothly. So uh, with that, I'd like to propose a two minutes break and we'll reconvene in about two minutes time just to stretch. Uh, our hands and legs and prevent the Zoom fatigue. And we'll start, uh, once we come back, we'll have uh, Mr. Sonam Wangdi, if uh, he's still around, to kindly chair the session uh, on, on updates. Thank you very much. And we'll see you in a couple of minutes, please.
All right, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I hope uh, you've managed to stretch your hands and legs a little bit, uh, get up a little bit, have some water. We'll, we'll start with the next session, which is uh, that of updates. Uh, and for that, I'd like to request Mr. Sonam Wangdi to kindly chair the session and lead us through it. Mr. Sonam Wangdi, if you're here. Thank you, Kostov. Uh, as always, yeah, you take me by surprise. Putting you on spotlight, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for uh, nominating me as the chair and uh, to take the session forward. Uh, as for the agenda, I would like to uh, invite the GSLAP uh, Secretariat. I think uh, you're going to give the updates, uh, GSLAP general up updates. So, Kostov, back to you then. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just give me a second. I'll uh, put up the presentation. Um, I hope my screen's visible. No, not yet. There. Sonamji, you see me, uh, see yeah. my screen, right? Right. Wonderful. Yeah. Right. Honorable ministers, excellencies, and dear colleagues, uh, you've been hearing a lot from me, but uh, good morning once again. And uh, it's it's really an honor to be uh, to be here today. Uh, and uh, this happens to be the second uh, virtual steering committee meeting of the GSLEP program. However, given the pace at which the vaccination against COVID-19 is going on, uh, as I think Dr. Misha also mentioned, we are hopeful that the next steering committee meeting will allow us an opportunity to meet each other in person. Of course, there are several unknowns out there still, including uh, a host country to host the next steering committee meeting. So it's basically a, a little shameless plug, requesting all the countries to kindly consider hosting the next uh, steering committee meeting as well. Um, anyway, what I'll do is I'll take up about five minutes of yours to update you about what the GSLEP program has been up to in the last one year. And as you all know, the GSLEP program is a unique platform that brings the 12 Snow Leopard range countries together uh, the country's ownership, along with the support of more than 30 national and international uh, and regional organizations, make the GSLEP program truly formidable. The GSLEP program secretariat is hosted by the Kyrgyz government and is supported by various technical and funding partners. Currently, the Snow Leopard Trust and the United Nations Environment Program are supporting a majority of the secretariat's activities, along with additional support from UNDP and GEF. In the past, the program has been supported by USA, WWF, Jeff Small Grants Program, and NABU. Organizations such as US Fish and Wildlife Service, Whitley Fund for Nature, and UK Aid have also periodically provided support to the GSLEP program. Yeah, the Bishkek Declaration uh, 2013 and 2017 drive the activities of the GSLEP program whose secretariat, uh, as I mentioned, was established in 2014 in Bishkek. And the goal of this uh, secretariat is to coordinate the implementation of the declaration and the goals identified within. Over the course of eight years, the members of the steering committee represented by hon honorable ministers, honorable environment ministers from so the Snow Leopard range have met several times to review and provide, it, uh, provide guidance and support to the global community of conservationists and donors about the priorities and needs of the conservation, uh, especially in the high, Asia's high mountains. The range countries have identified 24 landscapes that hold promise to protect up to 25% of the global snow leopard range. And despite ecological, topographic, and uh, national, cultural, and legal differences, several of these landscapes have developed climate smart management plans uh, using the, uh, the guidelines that have been prepared by the GSTEP program with help of uh, expertise from across the world. The GSTEP Secretariat's key role is to coordinate activities, expertise, and facilitate knowledge and information exchange. 
And in the past two years, we have been able to use the power of technology to scale up and reach out wider than we have ever managed to do before. Um, Please, I'll, I'll, I'll sincerely urge you all to kindly consider exploring the GSLAB website uh, that has been transformed into a knowledge hub and capacity center for global conservation priorities. Uh, the website provides access to publications, meeting reports, policy advisories, guidelines, manuals, software, toolkits, spatial data sets, and also experts whose support uh, we have secured for various initiatives, whether it's small leopard surveys, whether it is partners principles training, whether it is um, uh, sustainable economic uh, uh, models and so on. The website is currently bilingual and has content available in Russian and English. Uh, we all would have ideally met uh, in person, but since that's not happening, to provide the next best experience to the participants of the GSLEP Steering Committee, we redeveloped the virtual venue of uh, the GSLEP Steering Committee meeting from last year with fresh content and events. Uh, our team uh, has done an, an incredible job here, uh, and we will urge you to explore the venue uh, who, uh, where you will find a lot of various uh, useful content. I'll just take a minute to show you around now. Uh, as you know, the venue is uh, co-hosting several side events as well, and visitors to the virtual venue can make announcement in the activity streams uh, for others to notice, or they can explore the schedules that are there on the left-hand side. If you miss an event, uh, you can always go back uh, and uh, watch its recording uh, by going to the specific date and time, or you can mark your calendars to participate in an upcoming event. The Snow Leopard Range countries continue to do an incredible amount of work for conservation, uh, despite all the challenges posed by COVID-19. And to showcase the length and breadth of the work done by range countries over the past one year, uh, we have set up uh, country kiosks that can be visited. Uh, my colleagues, Dr. Ranjani Murli and Justine Shanti Alexander, uh, have uh, done an incredible job here of putting all this information together into valuable, uh, uh, va uh, these e effective kiosks. And um, yeah, please, uh, I mean, the way you can look at these kiosks is you can consider them like uh, visiting a stall at, at an event venue with exhibits from dis different countries. Uh, there's quite a lot of information that countries have generously and very graciously shared with us, which we have been able to put up on the website. Now, you may also be able to learn about the outstanding work being done by several partner organizations uh, in the partner stalls. And there is information about various projects uh, under the knowledge kiosks. You can find information about innovations and some innovative uh, developments under the innovation section and initiatives uh, that are going on, including pause. Uh, under in specific segments of the virtual venue. Lastly, if you find a friend or an old acquaintance uh, in the community section, you can always say hi or uh, you know, leave a quick message uh, for her or him to uh, have a conversation with them. Uh, so that's, that's what the venue looks like. Um, in the past year or so, what we have really focused on is to create and disseminate knowledge widely. Uh, you might have just seen some of the documents that we uh, released and the web, uh, web portal, uh, specifically the IWT and Unusual Encounters data portal that you saw uh, is uh, an important product that was developed over the year to provide seamless access to those who may have information about poaching, illegal wildlife trade, and also sightings of snow leopards. Uh, as, as, uh, as described by Ms. Formenich uh, earlier, uh, these are these data are invaluable in helping combat one of the key threats that snow leopards face today. Uh, the information about unusual encounters will not only help us engage with citizen scientists, but also help us improve our understanding of snow leopard distribution, especially in light of climate change uh, that we are seeing happening happen around us. Some of you might also remember uh, the advice paper of unusual encounters that was released last year at the steering committee. We are happy to report that not only it has been um, uh, it has been shared across multiple countries and many countries have uh, started working to integrate it into policy. We've also been able to translate it into Russian, Mandarin, Hindi, Urdu, Dari, and Kyrgyz. Uh, our current our teams are currently working on translating it into Mongolian and Nepali. 
Uh, you'll soon hear from Dr. Ian Derbach, and I won't take much of uh, your time uh, talking about what he's going to talk about, but there has been some substantial developments in the PAUSE initiative. Just to give you a teaser though, um, uh, we, we are thrilled to report that we managed to increase the coverage of snow leopard abundance surveys using statistically and ecologically robust methods from less than 2% uh, before 2017 to nearly 10% by the end of 2021. A growth of 400% is absolutely mind boggling. Uh, and we are grateful to each of the Snow Leopard Range country and partner organizations, and of course, the PAWS Technical Advisory Committee for them to lead us to this uh, point. Uh, Dr. Ian will talk more about it, uh, whether we are uh, already there or not. One of the most remarkable achievements that has been uh, one where we managed to collaborate with the Snow Leopard Network uh, that developed and disseminated uh, training and capacity building modules on a wide range of topics. Uh, in total, we've had 15 workshops uh, organized last year, including one in Mandarin and one in, uh, I think, two in Russian. Uh, a total of 300 different individuals from 27 countries, more than double the number of Snow Leopard Range countries have been reached out through these training programs so far. The training effort includes more than 125 hours of knowledge sharing by representatives from more than 30 different organizations. Uh, please allow me to call out to Dr. Justine Shanti Alexander and Ms. Raki Karumbaya from the Snow Leopard Network for spearheading this uh, uh, training at capacity building initiatives in collaboration uh, with the GSLEP programs team. As some of you might recollect, the Jeff uh, funded project uh, jointly implemented by UNDP and Snow Leopard Trust was uh, supporting much of the GSLEP programs activities until recently. The project got over in December 2020 with satisfactory rating by independent evaluators. And you may find a detailed report about the project on the GSLIP website, as well as the virtual venue. Uh, currently, the GSLIP program is partnering with the United Nations Environment Program, as uh, um, Mr. Uh, Dr. Salman mentioned, and the Snow Leopard Trust for implementing the amb an ambitious project titled Vanishing Treasures that hopes to not only understand the impacts of climate change on snow leopard habitats, but also pilot climate smart ecosystem based adaptation strategies in Central Asia. With that, I'm sorry for taking us a little longer than I was supposed to, but I'd like to reiterate that the GSLIP program exists because of uh, each of the range countries and its, uh, and its partners. And we are grateful to each one of you here for your support whenever we have required it. We are especially grateful to the national focal points from all range countries for their unwavering support and guidance. And uh, with that, I'd like to stop here. Um, uh, over to you, Sonamji. Thank you. Thank you, Kostov. Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation and the update uh, about the GSLAB and what GSLAB GS has been doing uh, over the last one year. In fact, uh, I would uh, like to... Uh, comment on the great work and the initiatives that has uh, been undertaken by GSLAP, even during the pandemic uh, in terms of uh, reaching out to all the range countries and in terms of uh, coming up with several uh, programs, uh, virtual programs for capacity building and other uh, relevant uh, topics in terms of assisting the range countries. Thank you once again, uh, Dr. Kostub. Uh, now moving, uh, moving on with our agenda, uh, we have the country update by Dr. Ranjini uh, Murali. And for this, uh, when she presents, I would like to invite each of the country uh, delegates uh, to come in if they feel like uh, when, they're, when Dr. Ranjini uh, gives the country updates for each of the country. So Dr. Ranjini, are yes, you Yes, I'm just gonna connect her. Uh, her presentation comes to a separate link, so I'll just put it up. Give me a second, please. Okay.
Okay, Do we hear uh, anything? G give me a second, Sonamji. I'm just trying to see if we can, for some reason, there's an audio issue. No. Oops, and it's also inverted. No. Um, just one second. We can see it, right? Yes, but the audio doesn't seem to go through for oh. some reason. Okay. Just one second. I'll give it one more try. Good morning, Honorable Ministers, Country Representatives and Observers at the SCM. The GSLAP Resolution 2020, endorsed by the Snow Leopard Range countries, identified resource mobilization, inclusive economic development, animal human health care. Good morning, making the initiative on the population assessment of the world's snow leopards, information management on poaching and illegal wildlife trade, efforts to reduce consumption of illegally hunted wildlife, and the implementation of the guidelines for conservation education and managing snow leopards in unusual and conflict situations. In spite of the restrictions caused by the ongoing pandemic, significant progress has been made across the snow leopard range towards achievement of the GSLAP goals. We would like to thank the range countries for providing the GSLAP Secretariat with country updates from October 2020 to August 2021. We present a brief summary of the updates provided by the range countries. More than 8 million US SD was mobilized for snow leopard conservation across the range. This funding was obtained from governments, international funding agencies, and NGOs. Several programs were initiated to manage and monitor disease in snow leopard landscapes. They included a holistic approach to health by preventing and managing wildlife disease and its risk of spillover to humans and livestock. Monitoring of livestock health, vaccination programs, and opportunistic monitoring of zoonosis in snow leopards. Some programs also train community members as health workers. Green economic initiatives focused on climate smart habitat management and creating alternative livelihoods were initiated. These uh, included ecotourism programs, development of orchards, handicrafts, and sustainable resource management. Climate smart interventions such as low cost so solar water systems and improved heating mechanisms were also created. Climate vulnerability assessments were initiated to plan future climate adaptation strategies. Conservation interventions to foster snow leopard and human coexistence were implemented across the landscape. These included conflict, or conflict mitigation measures like corral improvement and livestock insurance, smart patrolling and monitoring, community-based monitoring, and strengthening capacity. They were also a focus on strengthening protected area networks and improving degraded habitats. A transboundary initiative in Central Asia between three countries was also launched. Snow leopard population assessments continued across the range using the PAUSE protocols, with some countries close to national level assessments. Prey surveys were also initiated in some countries. Efforts to disrupt illegal wildlife trade, including training programs for enforcement officials, 
anti-poaching patrols and other surveillance and monitoring activities were initiated. Across the range, there were reports of four trade-related incidents involving snow leopards and two incidents involving falcons. These cases were apprehended at international customs. Conservation education programs were held across the range focusing on both children and adult stakeholders. A range of materials and resources were also produced. Mitigation measures to decrease instances of unusual encounters with snow leopards were initiated across the range. These included installation of mobile electric fences and building of predator-proof corrals. The GSLEP guidelines for managing unusual encounters were translated into eight languages and made available to each country across the range. One example of the guidelines being implemented was the safe release of the snow leopard back into its habitat after a 36 hour ordeal when it was trapped in a corral. Individual country updates are available at the country kiosks on the Attendify website. Please do visit them. Thank you for your attention. So that's, uh, yep, that was uh, Ranjini. Uh, Sonamji, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ranjini. Uh, uh, so, Moving uh, over to the next, uh, we have the pause update, uh, which will be delivered by Dr. Ian Durbach. So Dr. Ian. All right, thank you, Dr. Sunil. Over to you, thank you. Thanks very much. I'll just share my presentation. Um, could you enable my screen sharing, please? Can you try it now, Ian? Yes. Thank you. Okay, good, mo uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. And it's a, a really a great pleasure to be able to um, share these um, these efforts by um, by the twelve snow leopard range countries um, on their behalf. Um, I thought I'll just start by um, re uh, revisiting the pause aims, just to remind everyone, and that the the aims of the, the aim of the pause initiative is to generate the first uh, truly robust estimate of how many snow leopards there are across the twelve snow leopard range countries. And this is based on the best available data and the best and most up-to-date scientific practices. The PAUSE initiative was launched in 2017 through the GSLEP Bishkek de Declaration, uh, in which the 12, the governments of the 12 Snow Leopard Range countries committed um, to this objective. So what, we, um, what we've done as part of this update process is to summarize all of the survey activities that have been taking place um, throughout the range based on the information that have been provided by, um, by each of the country's teams. This information could take different forms. So some teams have provided us with, um, with GIS files uh, establishing where the, the survey areas um, that they had been to were. Some provided a a single GPS coordinate uh, representing the, the center of the, of the activity and a size of the area that was surveyed. And other teams provided us just with the site name. Um, and then we, uh, we used Google Maps to establish roughly where the survey had taken place. From this information, um, I'm happy to report that there are over 140 snow leopard surveys that have been conducted to date. Um, with several more being planned um, for the near future. Um, we have information from, uh, from all 12 of the snow leopard countries um, uh, or um, on this diagram or very nearly um, in, in place. Um, it represents a, a really enormous effort. 
and nearly 6,000 camera traps have been deployed uh, across nearly 196,000 square kilometers. And just to, um, to say what this was, uh, what, what increase this represents from last year, um, last year we had 76 surveys, so nearly 100% increase in the reported surveys from last year. And they had covered 122,000 square kilometers. So that's a nearly 65% increase from last year. Um, so I'd just like to, uh, to thank all of the teams um, and their representatives for, um, for sending us this information and also for the, the truly enormous effort that's gone into these surveys. And um, we've surveyed um, nearly 10% of the estimated snow leopard range, which is, um, which is a, a substantial, um, a su substantial proportion. Um, so this represents a huge achievement by all snow leopard range countries and the, the data that we've gathered in these surveys is already leading to significantly better um, understanding of snow leopard population sizes um, and snow leopard behavior. Um, some of these will be reported in country updates and some of these, um, these improvements and uh, new developments will be reported in a pause sideline meeting next Friday, uh, the 29th. Uh, while this data is important in guiding, um, in guiding future efforts, um, for robust final estimates of snow leopard density, surveyed areas should be broadly representative of the entire snow leopard range, um, which is indicated roughly in blue um, on, on the slide. Um, if we look at where surveys have been done, um, if we look at the ruggedness uh, of those areas, we see that surveys have mainly been done in highly rugged um, areas where snow leopard density is likely to be highest. This is something that can be accounted for in, uh, in later analyses, but there are limits to the degree to which this can be accounted for. So future su survey efforts should focus on both high and low density areas, and the PAUSE team provides a range of tools to support um, decisions about where, um, where, to, where to survey next. Um, so I, uh, to, be, to be more specific, 47% um, of the surveyed area is in the most rugged 25% of the range and 12% of the surveyed area is in the least rugged 25% of the range. The, this represents um, a, a good distribution of survey, um, of survey efforts throughout the, um, throughout the range, but you will notice that most of the survey effort has been in, in the most rugged areas and as I say, this is something that future survey efforts can, um, can address. So other, other significant pause achievements, uh, as Costa said previously, um, there's been a substantial training program and over 400 practitioners have been trained in some of the best practices. Uh, there's also been a new establishment of prey and threats working groups uh, dedicated to, um, to these subject matters. In terms of next steps, the, the, the pause end goal is um, a robust estimate of snow leopard um, abundance, how many snow leopards there are throughout um, the 12 snow leopard range countries. But we, it's important to, um, to celebrate uh, intermediate achievements as well. And we think that this, um, the survey effort to date has, um, it represents uh, the largest, um, the largest ever um, survey of a wildlife population by, um, by using camera trap methods. And so we're planning a scientific paper reporting these, um, these joint survey uh, efforts. And we're inviting um, all, all teams and, um, and all, uh, all representatives to, re um, to be part of this paper um, by submitting their, um, their uh, their survey efforts to date, and there'll be more information on this um, as well in the pause update next Friday. Um, pause also continues to support the analysis of completed surveys and also the design of future of future surveys. Um, and we're um, we're asking for the um, the support of uh, of all twelve um, all twelve governments in um, in supporting their teams in achieving. Um, uh, remaining surveys and the analysis of those surveys. So I'd like to end um, this quick update just by saying um, thank you 
a big thank you to uh, to all of the teams and um, all of the foundations that are supporting these teams. There are too many to mention in the short presentation, so I've just listed them on this final slide. Um, but uh, really, a, a big thank you. And without um, without these efforts, um, the overall pause objective uh, would not be possible. Thank you. Good, Dr. Ian. Thank you for uh, giving us the updates on the pause and its uh, efforts uh, that we are making and the impact that uh, the pause initiative is making globally. Uh, I think uh, with this, uh, we come to the end of this session. Uh, uh, am I right? Uh, Dr. Absolutely. Kristol? Absolutely. So, Ramji, in case yeah. anybody has any questions or comments, uh, they're more, more than welcome. But we can quickly transition to the next session if if so. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, maybe uh, uh, pass around around uh, two to three minutes if any uh, of our members uh, have any questions to the last uh, three sessions. Uh, starting from the general update uh, provided by Dr. Costo and then moving on to the country update uh, by Dr. Uh, Ranjini, and then uh, finally to the pause update by uh, Dr. Ian. So if, if there are any comments or questions, uh, we would like to open the floor uh, for the questions. Otherwise, if there isn't any, uh, I would like to bring the session to an end. Uh, May we wait for about a minute? Sure, we can. Yeah, no open questions in the uh, Q&A section either. So I think we are good to. Oh, um, Dr. Satyakumar has a question. Uh, let me bring him up as a, just a second, Satyakumar ji. I'll have to look for you. Uh, Please go ahead, Satya Kumarji. Uh, the mic is with you. Uh, you're muted. Satya Kumarji, you're muted. Can you hear me yeah. now, Kostum? We should hear you now. Yes, yes. Yes, Dr. Satya okay. Kumar. Thank you, Dr. Kostum. We do, sir. And uh, thanks to all the dignitaries and participants. Uh, it is a wonderful meeting going on. I have one small query to Dr. Yan, who just made a presentation on pause. Uh, uh, Dr. Yan, you had showed this uh, ongoing activities of pause. I was wondering whether uh, the activities that in India that we're doing as uh, SPI, that is Stolopert Population Assessment in India, which is actually an uh, Indianized version of pause, the protocols being almost the same. Uh, I wonder whether your maps showed the coverage of what we are currently doing in India regarding uh, snow leopard population assessment. Following the same protocol, does your map show the areas that we are currently surveying for uh, step uh, the, the two occupancy surveys as well as the efforts for camera trapping, etc.? Yes, I believe so. I, I think we're... The, that, that map has been constantly updated, but as of yesterday, which was when I created the map, it has all of the information that we have with it. So if that information was submitted to, to pause, then it will be shown on the, on the map, I believe so. Okay, but I think there are, uh, the map needs updation. We will uh, provide the information to you so that, uh, uh, in fact, all the uh, uh, Snow Leopard Range states and union territories of India the snow leopard population assessment work is in progress and uh, a few states have made substantial progress. So I think we have to update this map. Just one small be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. please do get in touch. That would be fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you. Dr. Kumarji. Uh, in fact, it's very encouraging to uh, learn that India is uh, coming forward with the data uh, to be provided to the boss and then uh, uh, to be provided to GSLAB and to be shown to the whole world that uh, what India is doing. In fact, uh, uh, representing Bhutan, uh, I was also mentioning that uh, our next Snow Leopard survey is designed uh, 
in very uh, close collaboration with Dr. Ian uh, following Paul's uh, protocol. So uh, maybe after next year, uh, Bhutan should be able to give you more updates, Dr. Ian. Uh, thank you. Uh, with this, I think uh, we come to the end of uh, our updates uh, session. Uh, just to sum up, uh, I would like to uh, uh, sum up the session uh, as the chair. So uh, thank you, Dr. Kostov, uh, for, the, uh, for making the chair and then uh, uh, summing up, I would like to uh, uh, bring to the notice of everyone that uh, in the general updates uh, provided by Dr. Kostu, uh, it was very interesting to learn about the virtual uh, venue of uh, the GS Lab, not just for the steering committee, uh, uh, for the other, uh, other updates or any updates that uh, each of the member countries would like to provide. Uh, to the GS lab and share with other member countries. It can be done through the virtual uh, country kiosks and, and uh, through the knowledge kiosk. Uh, in fact, uh, I would say uh, this should be like the Facebook of uh, Snow Leopards, uh, whereby we provide updates for each and every uh, individual uh, that we have in our country through this uh, virtual venue and, and uh, through the uh, GS lab uh, website. Uh, coming to the country updates, uh, Dr. Ranjan, uh, Ranjani Murali, uh, she provided a very brief update about uh, each of uh, the, uh, what we are doing in terms of uh, uh, snow leopard conservation by each uh, of the member countries. Uh, and then uh, she encouraged uh, each and every one of us to visit the uh, GSLAB website and get the country updates from the uh, uh, website. So I would also like to encourage each one of us to keep updating our own country uh, uh, initiatives that we are doing towards the, the great work each uh, member countries are doing for the conservation of snow leopards. And regarding the pause update, uh, I would uh, uh, like to uh, thank Dr. Ian for uh, giving us the update and what pause can actually do for the uh, conservation of snow leopards. In fact, uh, it, it it is a joint effort and a very collaborative efforts of uh, all the member countries and the supporting uh, partners, uh, the institutions that uh, uh, the, uh, in his last slide, he provided a list of institutions that have uh, supported, but uh, not the exhaustive list. I believe uh, each and every uh, member and the partner organizations uh, have provided uh, in what uh, pause has become into. Uh, what pause is today is all our efforts. So I would like to thank uh, Dr. Ian for updating us on uh, the pause and the protocol that uh, we can follow in terms of assessing the world's uh, snow leopard uh, population. Uh, with this, uh, we come to the end of this session. And once again, I would like to thank each and every one of you for uh, uh, for attending the session. Uh, and then uh, thank you, Dr. Kostu, for uh, giving me the surprise. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Saurabhji. And uh, yeah, that's what good friends are for. So thank you for stepping in <laughs> and really uh, taking care of this session. Uh, OK, so we are running a little late. So without much ado, I'd like to quickly transition into the next technical session, uh, which is, a, I think, a very important one. Uh, in this session, first, I'd like to request uh, Dr. Charudat Mishra to give a brief talk on uh, the increasing risk of emerging infectious diseases in snow leopard habitats. Uh, followed by that, there will be uh, uh, there will be a short statement and a speech by our friends in USAID. And lastly, we will have uh, Dr. Uh, Simon Morgan from. Um, uh, Stanford University talk about the snow leopard genome. So that's a, going to be an important, uh, all these three are very important updates. So please stay with us as I uh, transition through the link for Dr. Charu Mishra's presentation. Thank you, uh, Chair. In my brief presentation, I'm essentially going to summarize what we have already uh, presented in the strategy report in the disease policy advisory. Now, I'm not a specialist in disease or healthcare, but I've had the privilege of working with some 
uh, an outstanding team of international ecologists, um, human health care specialists, public health specialists, doctors, as well as uh, veterinary doctors to um, create the strategy report as well as write a more technical paper um, based on, on which the strategy report is based. So after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic outbreak and you know, our lives have changed, all of, all of our lives have changed considerably. It is very pertinent for us in this gathering to ask uh, whether snow leopard ecosystems, to what extent are they safe? And when I say snow leopard ecosystems, of course, are we mean the snow leopards themselves, all the other host of wildlife that occurs, but indeed the people as well, the local communities as well, as well as the visitors. So how safe are snow leopard landscapes from the perspective of disease? And it's always instructive to go back into history and look at what has happened so far. And if you move, we move away from snow leopard landscapes for a minute and just look at the history of known pandemics that have occurred over um, the last several hundred years, there's a few things we see in this figure. One is that the um, pandemics are not new. The circles in this figure represent a very, it's very unfortunate and tragic, but the circles essentially represent the, um, the number of lives lost due to disease outbreaks in the past, due to pandemic outbreaks in the past. And the size of the circle, uh, the larger the circle is, uh, the more lives were lost um, in that pandemic. And so one thing is clear, this is not new. I'll draw your attention to the circle on the extreme right bottom corner, which is the COVID-19 pandemic. And very sadly, a 4.2 million lives already lost so far. And uh, but if you look at the some of the other outbreaks, including the perhaps the, the deadliest one of the Spanish flu, which incidentally did not originate in Spain, so it's a bit of a misnomer. The number of people who died because of Spanish flu, this happened during the First World War, and the number of people who died during the Spanish flu was one third of humanity living at that time. So the bottom line being that humans have faced tragedies due to pandemics, due to disease outbreaks throughout known history. The other thing that we see in this figure is also that if you look at the right side of the figure, in the last 20, 30, 40 years, there's you see many, many more, um, there's a concentration of outbreaks, even the circles are small, there's a concentration of uh, disease outbreaks, and which gives us to believe that the frequency of such diseases emerging and outbreaks happening might be on the rise. Moving back to, okay, one more thing I, I should point out is that the gray circles, uh, the circles in gray represent those diseases that are actually that have a zoonotic origin that have originated from animals and jumped into humans. The pathogens have made that species jump. And if you look at it, majority of these uh, known pandemics have been caused by zoonotic diseases. So essentially reiterating the point that our lives and our health are closely linked to that of um, wildlife and the other animals around us. Now, coming to the high Asian mountains, the high mountains and plateaus of Asia, which cover about six and a half million square kilometers. And of this, the part of it is the snow leopard mountains, about one and a half, two million uh, square kilometers of snow leopard habitat, which is represented by these various colors. Now, if we look at this area, traditionally, the belief has been that uh, the, these areas have low risk uh, of disease emergence, and I'll show you that in a map shortly. And the idea has been that these areas have low pathogen diversity and abundance. And, you know, because people, um, human populations are low, uh, people are sparsely distributed and so on. So the risk of disease emergence in these areas is not very high. But at the same time, people have recognized that these areas might, you know, the fact that there might be 
lower exposure to pathogens might also mean that the lower the intrinsic levels of immunity are lower as well. Now, if you look at the, um, you know, this is a, a, a figure by Jones et al. And if you look at it's what it's showing is where the emerging infectious diseases, non-emerging infectious diseases have originated. And if you look at high Asia and where smaller are, there is almost no um, diseases that seem to have new diseases, emerging infectious diseases that have emerged in this landscape. So that 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 view that you know these might be areas of relatively low low risk is is supported. Similarly, if you look at the global risk of uh, uh, disease outbreaks of zoonotic diseases, and this is based on disease modeling, again, what we see is that high Asia turns up as a very low risk area. And part of the reason might be ecological and climate related, but the other thing to keep in mind also is that these disease models are based on past outbreaks. So if there's no past outbreaks, then it's very likely that this kind of landscape and habitat will show up as being of high risk. However, as uh, there, are, there are multiple factors that including multiple characteristics of snow leopards, again, once again, that makes snow leopards more vulnerable to disease, but also and, um, and disease related mortality, and, uh, but also make them less vulnerable. So there's you know, there's characteristics that um, work both ways. But what we have done is to look at in this paper, um, the first we looked at the prevalence of pathogens. What kind of pathogen prevalence is actually already there in high Asia, particularly in snow leopard landscapes? And what we find is that there is a whole bunch of bacterial, viral, and parasitic diseases, serious ones, that are already present in the system, or there have been small outbreaks or cases reported. So when we look closer at what is going on in high Asia, the other thing that we realize is that even though until now the risk of disease outbreaks might have been lower, there are a lot of factors related to ecology and ecological degradation, the socioeconomic and socioecological changes, um, and as well as there are global factors, global drivers like climate change, like globalization, and so on, that are actually increasing the risk of disease outbreaks and outbreaks of zoonotic diseases in high Asia. And please have a look at the report that's uh, being released uh, today as well as those of you interested can look at the uh, paper, which is uh, open access for the technically minded and where you will find more details and I will not um, spend more time on this. But what I will ask do is to, before I end is to ask this question, but whose problem is it? Is it a, a local issue? Is it something that only individual governments must deal with or what? And, you know, I think the the answers become quite obvious um, given the kind of response that has been required to address the COVID-19 pandemic. And the, the, the answer is that it is a collective problem. It is a global responsibility. You know, there are local and global services in snow leopard that snow leopard landscapes provide ecosystem services that they provide that all of us around the world benefit from. These are species of global conservation importance. And as we have seen, healthcare is a global concern. It is not an isolated issue. So in the, um, in the uh, strategy report, what we have done is to provide a set of recommendations and these are of very general nature. And part of the reason if these are of a general nature is because there's not much known about uh, the, the risk of disease in high Asia. And there's definitely research, much more research investments to be made, but there's uh, and long-term surveillance programs to be established for diseases. But there's a whole bunch of other things that we can do better. We can, you know, including data sharing uh, within and between countries. Trade in poaching and trade in illegal wildlife um, uh, is our big concerns, and you know they need to be disrupted, not just for species conservation, but for the sake of uh, 
human health as well. Uh, we need to spread increased awareness of you know, the potential risk of diseases across non-local landscapes. To the extent possible, discourage the use of wild animal products. Uh, there's significant investments required in both uh, strengthening both uh, veterinary health care, but also human health care in high mountain landscapes, which have tended to be relatively remote and without the kind of um, health care infrastructure and monitoring infrastructure that is needed. They're absolutely necessary to, um, to uh, ensure judicious use of antibiotics and antimicrobials. There's an increasing problem of feral dogs in small leopard landscapes in many, many countries. And these dogs can uh, serve as really a reservoir for um, you know, a variety of pathogens and serious ones too as well as become agents for transmission. Uh, wild animal captures to the extent possible need to be minimized. And lastly, and importantly, we need to ensure that the economic development that is going on in small leopard landscapes can become more ecologically sustainable, less ecologically damaging. And because you know the, the, these are also areas which are facing the, they're facing multiple onslaughts, climate change, like I said, these areas are warming at twice the kind of uh, average temperatures um, reported for the Northern Hemisphere. So there's climate change, there's a lot of pollution and degradation, uh, mining, infrastructure development, and so on. And to the extent possible, it would serve a big service to whole of humanity if the efforts could be made right now when we still have the opportunity to sort of alter the trajectory of economic development to make it more ecologically sustainable in snow leopard landscapes. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was Dr. Charu Mishra. Uh, Dr. Mishra, you, you, you're online as well. So maybe you can uh, switch on your video and uh, uh, maybe if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, uh, please share with us uh, here. Uh, our hope is that these important issues that are being discussed today will make it to the GSTEP resolution 2021. So it will be really uh, valuable to receive your comments and inputs at this point in time. Uh, though, of course, we'll reach out to you later as well. But Please, if any of you have any suggestions or comments, kindly let us know. I think there's a, Dr. Satyakumar has a question, um, Kostu. Uh, yes, I'll just- uh, Satyakumar, would you mind typing it out? It might be e easier if you could just type. Uh, while while we are uh, waiting for the uh, question, I just wanted to. Oh, okay. That's a. Oh, it's it's an old question. I'm so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was hanging around. There. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, Dikumar. <laughs> but um, yeah, so no, I just want to mention that um, you know I think the, there's even when with. Uh, species like the snow leopard, you know, things such as flagship species and so on, I think there's been very little information, very few studies on disease in wild snow leopards. I mean, I think if you look at wild snow leopards, there's probably a whole, in total, maybe a, two papers or three papers that have ever been published, that two based on limited data sets from one region and so on. So I think there's a great need to not just intensify our understanding of um, diseases in snow leopards, but just, you know, these are landscapes where people and snow leopards and the other wildlife, as well as livestock, are very close interactions. And, you know, um, and therefore the, uh, the, you know, perhaps a One Health kind of approach, I know there are different inter interpretations of One Health, but I just wanted to mention that I think as conservationists, it's becoming even more important after the pandemic that we start paying enough attention to the issue of healthcare and disease 
uh, not just in the wild animals and the livestock that use those um, landscapes, but, but also the people and the kind of risks people face. And I think that's something that we can, uh, you know, through the, if the secretariat can also take it upon itself to really help create platforms where these efforts of conservationists and human doctors and wildlife health specialists, as well as epidemiologists and disease modelers, you know, if you could create a platform and collaborative work and adopt some landscapes where we can have good um, uh, disease surveillance and monitoring programs, as well as intensify our healthcare efforts for you know, the livestock and, uh, and people as well, in addition to doing good surveillance and monitoring in wildlife. I think that would be extremely useful and not just useful, but uh, given the world we live in, I, I think it's critically important as well. Okay, so since we don't have many questions now, maybe people are still mulling over them, Charu. Maybe we can come back to the questions and we can quickly move to the next uh, segment, which is, uh, which is linear infrastructure in snow leopard habitat. And for that, I have a, a video message from Mary Milnick. Yeah, I'll just pl play it out in a second and we'll start again, please. Yeah. Good day, everyone, and warm greetings from Washington, D.C. My name is Mary Melnick, and I work with USAID's Asia Bureau. I'm the Division Chief for Environmental Security and Resilience. I'd also like to take this opportunity to offer hearty congratulations to all of you participating in today's meetings and especially for your hard efforts and successes in the Global Snow Leopard and Ecosystem Protection Program. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the threats of linear infrastructure, roads and rails and transmission lines to snow leopards and their habitats. First, I want to talk a little bit about why snow leopards are so vitally important. Snow leopards, I believe, are a key to addressing our grave crises of biodiversity and climate, as well as for preventing the further spread of zoonotic diseases, as you've been hearing about today. Snow leopards at the top of their food chain are extremely important for a healthy ecosystem. They also have great value in allowing communities and countries to have improved water supplies by improved management of their habitat, which are in key headwater areas for Asia's great rivers. So they're vitally important. So what are the threats posed? Today, among the greatest are the, the very large plans for linear infrastructure throughout snow leopard habitat. I must congratulate all of you as well for having identified the conservation landscapes. And if one were to overlay a map of the infrastructure, there would be quite a lot going through it. So what will be the impact? It's likely we'll see habitat fragmentation. And with that, we'll see increased traffic of goods and services, which is fabulous for economic growth, but it may have implications for watershed management and environmental degradation. It will also bring in more people. And with more people, we will start to see more human wildlife conflict and poaching. And what about the prey? The prey will, will likely be severely impacted as there are so many migration routes for these animals throughout the high mountains of Asia. So what can be done about it? At USAID, we've been working on promoting and advancing safeguards to linear infrastructure. And how does one do that? First part of planning is understanding where the snow leopard and its prey are, and how can we design particular mitigation measures so that we can have both infrastructure and snow leopards in healthy ecosystems. So in order to do that, uh, we worked with a company called Perez, as well as the Center for Large Landscapes Conservation based in Montana with some road ecologists to get a sense of what is the types of different planned infrastructure right now in Asia. So they did many maps overlaying the roads with key areas of biodiversity, and as well as did a um, assessment of people's 
capacity to implement safeguard measures. And I think you'll be hearing more uh, about the, this project called LISA, standing for Linear Infrastructure Safeguards in Asia. So that, as that project wraps up, we are continuing to work on this theme with WWF, Snow Leopard Trust, as well as the Center for Large Landscapes Conservation. And I would like to take this opportunity uh, to offer partnering with all of you and also perhaps making a recommendation. I understand that you'll be developing a new conservation strategy for snow leopards. And how can we work together to consider uh, what will be the actions necessary and recommendations to take into account the growing infrastructure in the region? And I would like to specifically offer um, that perhaps one step in, in, in beginning that work is to bring together all of you in conservation ministries and NGOs with those in ministries planning for this infrastructure and for engineers and the private sector and those financing. Uh, so I will welcome uh, hosting uh, a dialogue on these topics and, and moving towards next steps in bringing together uh, the two different communities, those on infrastructure and those in conservation, and to have everyone fully understand uh, the current landscapes that are, are being designated for snow leopards through all of your work. So with that, I will say thank you very much to the organizers. I wish you much success in your meetings and um, happy World Snow Leopard Day tomorrow with best wishes and hope to hear from you soon. Bye. Thank you. Uh, that was Mary Milnick from USAID. And now I'd like to quickly plug in a, par a, a short presentation by uh, Dr. Aditya Gangadharan, who worked on the project that Mary just mentioned. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, as the case may be. Uh, my name is Aditya Gangadharan, and I'm going to be talking to you about some of the results from a project that I was involved in recently. This was the Linear Infrastructure Safeguards in Asia project, or the LISA project. Now, uh, this project actually was quite, uh, you know, it's, it, it was a much larger project that involved 28 countries. We did various types of analysis, including of the scientific literature, uh, capacity assessments, things like that. So what I'm gonna give you is a very, very small size of this, a very um, condensed version, uh, particularly that which could be relevant to snow leopards. Now, uh, you know, really looking at this relevance. Now, are snow leopards highly impacted by linear infrastructure right now? Well, probably not, not so much particularly compared to many other species uh, of large mammals where linear infrastructure plays a huge role in determining their uh, population viability. But could they become more impacted by linear infrastructure in the future? Absolutely, yes. There's lots of linear infrastructure being planned. Uh, and uh, therefore, this is something where we can look at learnings from other areas, from other species, and then figure out how to mitigate uh, these impacts on snow leopards. Now, um, uh, I should just clarify here that when I'm talking about linear infrastructure, I'm mainly talking about roads, railways, and power lines, which is what we looked at as part of the study. Now, what are these impacts that linear infrastructure has uh, on wildlife, particularly large mammals? So the direct impacts are obvious when an animal gets killed by vehicles on a road or it's run over by trains or it's electrocuted by a power line. Uh, there's also these indirect impacts that happen at small scales. So for example, you may have a road that comes up and then alongside it, you have a railway. And then alongside that, you have power line infrastructure, which all leads to this sort of local uh, habitat loss and degradation. You have this effect where particularly roads catalyze human access and impact in the region around them. So you have this sort of fishbone structure that comes up, human settlements, you have people coming in and then perhaps they are starting to hunt and things like that. Uh, there's changes in habitat use or behavior. So you have, for example, garbage that's dumped along roads that attracts um, certain animals and then carnivores also get attracted to that and they all could all end up as roadkill. And then there's of course the issue of movement barriers uh, that happens for you know, roads, railways particularly, um, and that happens quite a bit as well and leads to larger population impacts. 
So what are these population impacts? So essentially what we have is that these direct effects and then you have these indirect effects that sort of aggregate over larger areas or larger periods of time over larger populations. And then they lead to various impacts, for example, uh, changes in habitat use or distribution or abundance of a species, um, changes in fitness or various other demographic rates, um, isolation, uh, genetic isolation of populations by these structures. And then you have changes in community structures as well. So these are all kinds of the impacts that can happen. A uh, very you know, broad overview I'm giving just for the context for the results that I'm going to show you next. So these are some of the results that are relevant to snow leopards, I would say. So we found that, uh, I mean, overall, we found over 600 species were uh, directly impacted by roads. They're killed by, uh, you know, by, by roads, railways, and power lines. Uh, and so that is, you have electrocutions, you have collisions, train strikes, all that kind of things. Uh, out of these, there's at least 11 species of felids that are impacted. So this is perhaps, um, you know, an underestimate, I would guess, but this is what is there in the literature. And so it includes both large and small um, uh, species. In terms of indirect impacts, particularly at small scales, these are far less studied than um, I would have expected. But one thing that does come out is the importance of poaching pressure, particularly along roads. And this is something that has been seen for uh, several species actually across the world as well. The fact that roads facilitate human access and that access in turn could lead to an increase in poaching pressure. Now, what about the population level impacts, like really the big, large level impacts that we're actually most interested in from the perspective of conservation of species? Um, well, roads can be a, quite a large source of direct mortality through collisions with vehicles. Uh, we haven't seen so much of that with railways for felids, um, although that does show up for species such as elephants. But if you look at species that are really low density, small populations, um, in this case, for example, Asiatic cheetahs, um, road kills were the second biggest source of mortality. And so that's something that really needs to be considered when you're talking about low density populations. Now, the other impact that's seen across different species, for example, for you know, Sundar clouded leopards, is that the more roads there are, the less abundance uh, of that animal in that area. So essentially, you have this road uh, effect zone, as they call it, where for a certain distance away from that road, it's not just that linear feature, it's actually a distance away from that as well, animals tend to move away. And so what that means is that you have less habitat available for that species, less area of occupancy, and so you know smaller populations as a whole. So these are some of the effects that you see uh, across different species as well. Um, there is the issue of connectivity, although um, this kind of depends on the level of traffic in roads. Again, I keep talking about roads because that's where most of the literature is, uh, and that's where most of the impacts that are relevant to felids are found. Um, when you have traffic that's quite high, uh, it's difficult for animals to cross. And uh, particularly when these gear go above a certain threshold, you have less gene flow that happens across populations that are separated uh, by that road. And so this leads to various other effects as we know of genetic isolation and all that kind of thing. And then there's that larger issue of catalyzing land use modification. Uh, there's a lot of historical analysis that talk about how roads and rails have opened up new areas for human settlement, for human activity, and they bring in a whole bunch of factors that lead to large-scale changes in land use. And that change in land use can really you know, push out uh, animals from that area, a particular way you're talking about felid species. So how do you mitigate these effects? I mean, that was really a whirlwind tour of the impacts, but how do you mitigate these? So, Broadly, you can look at things like modifying animal behavior, modifying human behavior. There's not that much of modifying animal behavior that we've come across in the field literature uh, in Asia. But in terms of human behavior, the sort of broad traffic calming measure that is undertaken is road or rail closures, particularly at specific times, or for example, at night. Uh, a lot of this comes from South Asia. 
uh, or during particular seasons. Apart from that, you can also try to modify the uh, behavior of individual drivers or train conductors. So you set speed limits, there's signages, you clear the words, there's sort of speed bumps uh, on roads. So these kind of things are done and they're, they're quite generic. They're not directed at a particular species usually. Uh, and the benefits do go to a lot of different other species. But one thing that does come across quite a lot in the literature, and perhaps that is because uh, it is expensive to set up these things, is physical separation of wildlife from roads or railways in particular. So uh, you can have situations where animals go under a road or a railway. You can have situations where the animals go over and the vehicle goes under. So uh, these are increasingly being used across Asia. And uh, we, have, we have found at least seven species of felids have been documented using these overpasses, underpasses. Uh, surely that's an underestimate. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, because there's, there's not that much monitoring that happens of these. Uh, and what monitoring happens is usually directed at the sort of the flagship species for which uh, these are built. So really a very, very short summary. And what I've talked about is a few of the many learnings uh, that we found in these reports that are relevant to snow leopards. There's other stuff as well. And so to look at those, uh, I would suggest you could take a look at our full reports. These are at this URL here, largelandscapes.org slash Lisa reports. Um, and so this was something that uh, I'd like to acknowledge. This was funded by uh, USAID. Um, and this was, of course, involved a whole bunch of other people. Some of the results that I'm showing here involved several other uh, people as well. And I'm acknowledging them here. And um, so I can take questions or you can feel free to email me as well. Thank you. Thank you. That was Dr. Aditya Gangadharan uh, giving a little uh, presentation about their recent work on linear infrastructures in Central Asia and South Asia. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please do post them in the little, uh, through that little icon which says Q&A. Uh, but before, uh, since we are running a little late, I'd like to immediately invite our next speaker, Dr. Simon Morgan. Uh, Dr. Simon Morgan works with the Stanford University and has been the lead uh, collaborator in developing the snow leopard genome, something that we've been briefly talking about for the last uh, two meetings, if you all recollect. Uh, so Dr. Morgan will give us more update. Over to you, Dr. Morgan. Thank you very much, Gustav. Um... Just gonna present you. Can you see the, the presentation screen? Great. Um, so just, uh, um, sorry, I've got a slight issue here. Excuse me. There we go. Okay, greeting honorable ministers, GSLEP members and chair. The Snow Leopard Genomes Project was instigated in 2018 by Stanford University's Program for Conservation Genomics um, in partnership with the Snow Leopard Trust. Uh, this was sponsored by the United Nations Development Program and the Global Environment Facility. There are three main objectives for the Snow Leopard Genomes Project and with each objective building off from the previous one. The first objective was to create a high quality reference genome, which is important to complete the, pro the project's other objectives. We've successfully completed this step by sequencing a sample from the San Diego frozen zoo collection from a captive individual. And then the reference genome is currently undergoing uh, the final processing steps and will be made publicly available as part of a manuscript that will be submitted to the journal G3 uh, in the next month, along with the tiger and leopard reference genomes we've recently completed. The second objective of this project is to conduct whole genome sequencing on as many snow leopard individuals as we are able to gain access to, 
an objective that has relied completely on the collaboration of this group. In the past few weeks, we have completed this step, and this is what we'd like to update you all on now. Through this collaborative effort, we have now sequenced a total of 38 samples, four of which originated from captive individuals. The 34 wild collected samples are indicated on the map and represent seven different countries. We've done them at sufficient coverage that we are confident that we will be able to access the diversity within the population adequately. As you can see, we are still lacking some samples from a number of countries. Here are some additional information on these samples for you. You'll, we will also be sharing a report uh, to the research consortium to offer details on the sequencing and origin of these samples. You'll see that there are also two samples that have been sequenced by other groups that is publicly available. So these two samples will also be added to our data set to make a total of 40 samples. We'll be in conducting analyses on this data set shortly to assess the distribution of genetic diversity across the snow leopard range, levels of genetic diversity, and signs of inbreeding. This work will include a wide range of co-authors who are all members of the Snow Leopard Genomics Research Consortium and will include everyone who made acquiring these samples possible. The last objective is to use this whole genome sequencing data to develop a SNP panel that will be able that will be available to members of the conservation and law enforcement community to verify the species, identity, and sex, and be able to differentiate or match individuals from low quality DNA. Additionally, we are identifying SNPs that represent geographic regions, such that we can identify the source of unknown samples confiscated from the illegal wildlife trade. As such, regional representation of samples is critical. So we do call on all members to assist us in the collation of bio biological samples from across the range, especially those regions we are lacking in samples. This final objective has yet to seek funding. We thank all current members for their vision and support of this project and call on all GSLEP members to participate. My contact details are here, so please feel free to contact us in this regard. Thank you again to the UNDP and GEF for sponsoring this project to date. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Simon, for that quick and uh, to the point update. I see we do have one question for now, but others, if you have any questions, please do let us know. And this question, well, it's a very basic question. You mentioned about the SNP panel. The question is, when can we anticipate the SNP panel to become available to use it for analysis of snow leopard scats for population assessment? Uh, thank you very much for the question. Yeah, we're hoping uh, to have that available within the next uh, year. Um, as mentioned, we are still seeking funding for the fi this final step. Um, so uh, if there's anybody out there that's wanting to participate on, on that perspective, um, again, please contact us. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so I think that brings us to the end of the technical session. In case there are any questions, comments, please feel free. Oh, we have one question from Aditya. Uh, has there been an assessment on infrastructure change across the snow leopard range and the rate of change? Uh, that's a question for Mr. Gangadharan, if you're still here. Nope. Aditya will get the answer to you. We, uh, we won't let... Uh, <laughs> Oh, there, there you are. Okay, so no, Aditya's answer in the uh, in the chat window is no, not specifically. There hasn't been a specific assessment of uh, infrastructure change across snow leopard range. Great, thank you, thank you, Aditya, for responding. Um, any other questions? If not, then we can quickly move to the last session, which is. Uh, sort of an extension of the current uh, uh, session as of now, but um, it's just to summarize where we are, what's next, and uh, uh, what do we, just for one second, please. Okay, great. Uh, all right, so, okay, hold on, please.
Right. So moving on, I'd like to uh, request you all in case you have any, uh, I think in, in the dis meet discussions today, there are a few points that come in strongly. One of them is of course the, uh, the incredible progress that we are seeing uh, in the pause initiative the second one is the new strategy document that Dr. Charu Mishra shared about uh, and uh, Irina from uh, the Russian Federation released. Uh, the third one is the online portal on illegal wildlife trade, as well as uh, unusual encounters with snow leopards, uh, allowing a better, integrate, better interface with uh, citizen scientists and, and, and people from across the world. Um, and lastly, uh, the, the development of some of these innovative tools. Now, if there are any other points that uh, any of you would like us to include uh, in the proceedings, please do let us know. Uh, what we are going to do on, our, uh, on behalf of the GSLEP Secretariat, we're going to compile the minutes of the meeting today and uh, work out a draft resolution which we will be sharing with the Honorable Chair and Co-Chair, uh, the ministers from Nepal and Kyrgyzstan respectively. And all, then we will be sharing it with the rest of the countries and the, uh, uh, the observer members uh, for comments and suggestions. So we hope to be able to finalize the resolution for this meeting uh, in about a month's time by um, uh, by end of November or first week of uh, December. And that should uh, hopefully uh, help us direct our initiatives forward from, uh, from here on. Um, I, let me actually take this opportunity to call upon some of the panelists for their comments. Uh, I'd like to first request Uzbekistan um, in case if you have, uh, if you would like to just say some concluding words, uh, Anwar or Mr. Sadikov, if you're still there, we'd like to request you to please say a word. Okay, uh, we'll come back to you, sir. Uh, uh, Nepal, would you like to uh, add anything to the proceedings that we have gone through right now? Please. Uh, please keep on. You can wrap and share one. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Kustop. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity. Um, I would just uh, say that. Uh, I would request to uh, finalize the draft of the proceeding in uh, CRA among with us. Then if uh, there is anything uh, missing or uh, from our side, or if anything to, uh, to add, uh, we would uh, give input and we'll finalize it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we have Chimedorch from Mongolia. Chimedorch, any additional comments or points you would like us to consider? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. No, no, any additional questions. And if there is anything missing, then we will amend it later on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Sunil Sharma from India, please let us know if there are any other points you would like us to consider. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Great. Thank you. Irina, you're here. Let me know, please, if you would like us to look at any other points uh, in the in the proceedings that we may have missed out. Ну, мы со своей стороны поддерживаем предложение. Если будут какие-то дополнительные комментарии, мы обязательно их направим в письменном виде. Спасибо. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tajikistan, would you would you like to add any more points or comments to the uh, to the proceedings of today's discussion? We have uh, Zona Zaidi from Pakistan. Would you like to add any more comments or points to the proceedings, uh, Ms. Zona?
hello, am I audible? Very much so, please. And, and thank you. I am very much honored for being part of this platform. Hello? Yes, we hear you. Thank you, Zona. Uh, all right. Mm, it was a very informative session for me, and it was quite uh, interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, Dr. Shakun, you're still there. Uh, thank you for staying with us. Uh, oh, Tajikistan, yes, please go ahead. Yes, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Sorry. Мне бы хотелось от имени проекта, который сегодня реализуется в Таджикистане, проект про ОНГФ, стратегия которого предполагает целый комплекс действий по сохранению экосистем снежного барса. Мне хотелось бы также присоединиться со своими некоторыми результатами и ознакомить участников этой сессии. Uh, и надеюсь, что steering committee действительно даст потенциал для совершенно новых и более эффективных uh, механизмов по сохранению экосистем и управлению ландшафтов снежным барсом. Uh, поэтому, не занимая большого количества времени вашего, uh, понимая, что уже большая работа проделана, я хотела бы uh, вам предложить посмотреть очень интересную инициативу э, Гаслепа – это киоск. Мы туда э, размещаем на русском и английском э, наш отчет ГФУ по итогам работы проекта, э, который вы, с которым вы можете типа инфографики, но там очень емкая информация. Пожалуйста, вы можете ознакомиться, вы можете поделиться этой информацией с вашими специалистами. Потому что наш проект в следующем году завершается, работа идет к концу, но это говорит о том, что в стране только начинается целая серия работ, потому что план действий подготовлен, план действий во исполнении и сохранении экосистем, и с учетом изменения климата, и со всеми другими рисками, с которыми связана деградация экосистем. Я хотела бы сказать большое спасибо организаторам этой встречи. Конечно, это очень интересно, но мы надеемся все, что совместно следующие стиринг комитеты мы будем принимать участие вместе. И очень важны иногда действительно дискуссии в кулуарах, обмен мнениями, опытом. Но все-таки огромное большое спасибо. И господин Куступ, вы с нами в тесном контакте, постоянно работаете, и мы просим поддержать вот эту инициативу всех стран. Там всего пока две страны разместили свои какие-то очень полезные ресурсы, мы к ним присоединяемся и призываем другие страны тоже в этот киоск положить много-много хорошей, полезной информации, которая каждой из нашей стране послужит для еще лучшей и еще более эффективной работы. Спасибо большое. И всех, всем нам пожелания успешной работы и, конечно, безопасности, здоровья всем, каждому из нас и всем близким и коллегам. Вот, пожалуй, краткие примечания. Презентацию для заинтересованных сторон вы можете сами ознакомиться. И вскоре мы на своем сайте разместим еще более полную версию на трех языках – таджикский, русский, английский. И с удовольствием будем пользоваться вашими ресурсами, которые тоже вскоре появятся в этом очень важном механизме «Киоск Геслэп». Спасибо. Что-то хочешь сказать? Скажешь? highlight that uh, on the online venue, which can be accessed at meet2021.globalsnowleopard.org, uh, you can go to the website and access it with your email ID. If you enter your email ID and you're unable to enter through it, please send us an email. We will provide access to you immediately. And 
on the website to the left hand side you have all these kiosks where you can find uh, a lot of information it's a sea of information and knowledge uh, as just shared by our colleagues from tajikistan please do visit these uh, sites we will keep the web uh, the online online venue of the steering committee uh, open for one full year so it will be accessible for the next 12 months to anybody who would like to visit and uh, have a look at it so we'll strongly recommend that you please uh, visit the link and access all the information and material that has been painstakingly uh, shared by countries and organizational partners and also put together by our incredible team uh, at the gsa uh, program program um i'd like to now we are i think every, any other country if i have um, forgotten right now but yeah before we end i'd like to uh, quickly run through matthias urich from unep matthias if you have any other any comments to add please let us know uh, before we now I'll call the meeting to an end matthias are you there martin matthias you both are here i think yeah no, i i i think matthias may not uh, be available but um yeah I, there is a, we don't have any uh, major points at this point to add uh, but we do appreciate uh, dfs at gslab puts in in getting everybody together and moving the conservation aspect forward in in such a comprehensive and and um uh, and and supportive manner for all of the the range countries. So congrats on that. Thank you, thank you, Martin. Uh, lastly, Charu, could you please uh, let us know if there's anything else you'd like us to consider or before we call the meeting to an end today? No, of course. I was just typing a message, but I do not send it out. I was just going to thank uh, you and Chingis and uh, Justine and Ranjini and our interpreters and involved with the secretariat for pulling together this meeting as well as in general the excellent work that the secretariat is doing we highly appreciate it. so thanks very much thank you charu and uh, yeah before i forget to restate what you just mentioned none of this work would have been possible uh, without the lead taken by dr justine shanti alexander dr ranjini murli Chingiz Kocharov, Altenay Kudarbekova, and our entire team, and of course, Edward and uh, Ludmila. Thank you both for doing this, what seems to be impossible to someone like me, an incredible job of uh, simultaneous interpretation. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, uh, foremost, thank you to the honorable ministers and representatives from the range countries. Uh, and our partner organizations for being here today and uh, helping us through this uh, steering committee meeting of the GSLEP program. We, uh, we will reach out to you again, but please do not forget to visit the online venue as and when you get time. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot of information out there for you to have a look at and interact with. Um, we will be reaching out to you with uh, your comments and suggestions for the uh, resolution from this meeting. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Arman. I'm so sorry. Yes, go ahead, Arman. Uh, hello, once again, thanks for uh, inviting our foundation and me personally. Since this is first time I take part in the steering committee meeting, it was incredibly useful, informative. So many projects in our uh, neighboring countries, and definitely I agree with many panelists that jointly and together in uniting our uh, financial and technological efforts and capabilities, we can achieve even more. And in Kazakhstan, once again, Snow Leopard is national symbol, and definitely the government and private institutions are now focusing on that. It's 30 years of independence, so it's correct time to start thinking about snow leopards in Kazakhstan. And hopefully we'll share contacts and information and figure out and think about possible joint projects in the region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, have a good day, everyone. And wish you all a happy snow leopard day in advance. Bye-bye.